The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. This high school gym used to be packed most nights. Not anymore. Do you know why? Because bad behavior by fans, especially adults, has caused a shortage of game officials across the country. You see, without officials, we can't have sports. Don't let this become reality. It's time for a change. Let's bench bad behavior for good. One second from half court. Go! Jumping for joy. First ever. A two on one. Oh, Hart, did he bring it in? He did. It is caught. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities.
I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up This high school gym used to be packed most nights. Not anymore. Do you know why? Because bad behavior by fans, especially adults, has caused a shortage of game officials across the country. You see, without officials, we can't have sports. Don't let this become reality. It's time for a change. Let's bench bad behavior for good. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kyle Smith, along with James Dale Rudd, as Loyola Academy will host Maine South. It's the battle of the Central Suburban League against the Chicago Catholic League. The 20th seeded Maine South Hawks will be taking on the 12th seeded Loyola Academy Ramblers. Hope you're having a good day so far. I certainly am. It's 1.14 p.m., which means it's about some time for some high school football. No sunshine, but not a lot of wind. It's just how we're used to in the Chicago area for the fall. You know, exactly, and it's always funny this time of year. You know, the football season starts out, you're in the summers, you're in the two-a-days, you're in the heat, you're in the humidity, and now you get to the most critical part of the year, and it's a whole different season, literally and figuratively. You've got the cold air, you've got the wind, you got a lot of folks out here trying to figure out how to get it all done on the field and make sure they can get everything done from A to Z. Who do you like in this game? Jamison Purcell's been absolutely brilliant in the yes. first two playoff games. 479 yards yeah. against the heavily favored Neighborville North team. He's just a sophomore, James, but guess what? already 19 Division One offers, and he still yes. has two more years of high school eligibility. Yeah. Uh, to put it simply, this guy's a stud. This guy's going somewhere. He is, he's got an arm. He's got everything that you need to make the fundamentals work and the extras work. So this could be uh, phenomenal for him as he leads the team ahead deeper to the playoffs. For Loyola, they have Pat Fitzgerald's son and Ryan Fitzgerald yes. as the signal yes. caller. He has been banged up a little bit, but that was then. This is now. Yep. Yep. They're at home. Here's what I want to ask you. As a color commentator with your experience in the game of football, is it different for Loyola's cornerbacks and safeties going up against a lefty quarterback? It looks a little bit different, different defensive ends because the right tackle is your blindside protector instead of the left tackle. 
I can promise you, I guarantee you, the coaching staff is well aware of that. These guys have been working on this kind of stuff, getting ready, because as you say, it is a whole different look, whole different feel than what you're used to, as most QBs are that right hand. You get a southpaw in here. It is a different ball game, so you got to make sure you're ready for that and your players don't get caught off guard. So I promise you, Kyle, they have worked on that during practice to make sure they're ready. Well, hope you hope so, because West Aurora and Naperville North, they didn't work on it that much. <laughs> and Jamison Purcell well, torched that. This is a kid that's going to be playing Division One football, though. It's going to be a great game, but here's the thing. It doesn't matter how many points your offense stacks up. It doesn't matter how many uh, touchdowns your quarterback throws. If your defense cannot hold, if your defense cannot come through, then you're toast. So defense for both sides is going to be critical. Whether this is a low-scoring game or high-scoring game, it all falls on the defense because obviously at the end of the day, when the clock hits zero in that fourth quarter, whoever's got the most points on the board wins, and that's a result of what the defense can or cannot get done. It's going to be a battle of the running backs. Michael Delamo yes. for Maine South. Loyola, they're really more well-known for their tailback. Ryan Fitzgerald is good as well, but watch out for carrying the football uh, for the Loyola Academy Ramblers and Drew McPherson. Very good tailback. Yep. He can go between the tackles. Yes. He can go to the edge. A-gap runs as well. If you can control the clock, because you know that Purcell and you know that Fitzgerald, more Purcell than Fitzgerald, they can sling it. And this is a main South team. We saw in the Naperville North game, even when they're inside their own five yard line, they still go five wide receivers, sure. four wide receivers to spread the field verticals, and they pick up the first down. You want that opening. You want to create that uh, disillusion for the defense to see, are they going to pass? Are they going to run? And it sets you up in these situations for things like that where you have that option, if it's short or if it's long distance, to find the hole, to find the person out in the flat and make the pass or go for the run. What are your predictions today? I think Maine South pulls off another upset. They win 35-28 today. Uh, and that's the thing. I, I'm looking back and forth. I watched the teams get off the bus. I was here when Maine South got off that bus. And let me finish when I say this. There was not a smile on any of those guys because they had the game face on. They were ready. They know they are walking into the lion's den. They know what they've got on their shoulders. They have to get done. And I'm with you. I wouldn't be surprised to see an upset here at home uh, by Maine South coming away with this one. What a season they're having. And the Chicago Tribune to start the season. It was all about keeping Constantine coins healthy and in the pocket. And then the sophomore takes over the Steps offense and they're up. even better. And it's amazing. And you see that all the time from the, from the local level to the pro level. Sometimes you've got somebody, a bench player, a secondary player, who when the time is right, they step up and they get it done. There's nothing wrong with Alex Smith. Very nice player. <laughs> but Patrick Mahomes. Steps up. Gets Just it a done. Different type of player. Yeah, we've seen it in all kinds of teams, all kinds of leagues. It's always surprising when that person gets the opportunity, what it is they can do. They know it's their time to shine. What's really interesting is the Jalen Hurts versus Tua Tonga Viola <laughs> debate. Both uh, yes. have been stars at the NFL yes. level. But Tua was just a little bit better in yes. college. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, he's been dealing with injury, of right. course. In but college, but in, in the NFL, yes. Jalen Hurts has arguably been the better quarterback. Uh, by far, by far. And with what they're doing in Philadelphia, it all makes it all work. It's all about coaching. It's all about a strategy. And that goes back to our point from earlier. I'm willing to bet both sides today have a solid strategy. They know what this game means. So they're going to pull out all the stops. What's your score prediction today? I, I want to say this is going to be another high-scoring game. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a tight one. I'm going to say uh, let's go 47 Wow. 41. I, I just got a funny feeling with everything going on. We're going to see a lot of back and forth. So 47-41, there'd be some missed PATs. There's going to be some misses in there. I think the wind, even though it's not very strong, could be a factor. I was watching kickers here and there. There's a little bit of wobble to the ball. There's nerves. I mean, a game yeah. like this, you know what this is, especially for the seniors. This could be your last game. This could be it for right, some of these correct. seniors. There's nerves here. Again, the weather could be a factor. There's a lot of things at play that can affect you, and all it takes is one miscue, one misstep, and that's the difference. Difference maker. We're going to take a quick uh, 30 to 60 second break and then we'll be back for more pregame analysis. Don't go anywhere. It's the Ramblers against the Hawks here on SBS. And then we go, go to break. Oh, you get a full street for you. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced how to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities.
One second from half court. Ah! Jumping for joy. With First ever. A two on one. Oh. Oh. Did he bring it in? He did. It is. Here's our nice little full screen for you. I'm Kyle Smith along with J.D. Rudd. Here's some pregame analysis for you. Maine South has scored at least 41 points in both games. They haven't played Loyola yet. We'll see if that continues today. <laughs> Led by their sophomore quarterback and Jamison Purcell. Let's not forget about Ryan Fitzgerald, though. Pat Fitzgerald's son, yep. he coached right down the street yep. in Evanston. Yep. Some good uh, Northwestern Wildcat teams. Should be a good one. Um, Loyola, they're the defending state champion. In fact, they've won the last two. Yes. John Holacek is an assistant. He's the former head coach. Okay. Paul Dovershow um, is uh, the head coach uh, for Loyola as they won the uh, state title last year. I don't know. I just think Maine South is tougher running yes. the ball. Yes. It's very creative offense. Yes. One, uh, at, at first, you'll see five wide receiver sets, then four wide receiver mm -hmm. sets. Then they'll pound the rock with yep. the Lomo. Yep. Then they'll pass it out in the flat. It's very unpredictable. I don't know if Loyola is used to that. It's a team that's dealt with a lot of adversity, started the year, played in that neutral side game in yep. Illinois State, yep. got trounced by, by East St. Louis. Yes. Then um, Fitzgerald went down. He's back. They're at home. I get it. It's kind of a home game, though, for Maine South. It's not that far away. It, yes, it's not a far track at all. And as you say, there's a lot of a lot of things on the line, a lot of heritage here for Loyola. But at the same time, uh, with, with Maine's coming in here, I just, I, as I said before, I feel there's just, they got the momentum. They got the game faces on. They are ready for this. We've seen what they've done the past couple of weeks. Uh, at the same time, too, let's remember, both of these teams, they've not smelled a loss in two months. It, you have to go back to the 13th and the 20th of September, respectively, the last time either team has lost a football game. So these are both two sides that are used to winning and finding ways to win. But as you say, creativity, I think, from the Hawks could be what does in the Ramblers. Will the moment be too big for Purcell today? I don't think so. I think he's a guy that's going to go through this, and I think he's going to find a way to help his team as best he can. But again, it's it, you can't put it all on one person's shoulders, one person's back. There's more to it. With the wind picking up for both coaches, do you have to consider going forward on fourth down instead of attempting field goals? I think absolutely, depending upon which side you're kicking. Obviously, with the wind coming from the south, we could see here it's blowing from right to left in our direction. So anybody who's kicking uh, toward the actual high school, they might have the advantage. But you kick into that wind, it is a whole different ball of wax. So we're going to take our final break and the national anthem and uh, public address mm. announcements coming up next here at Loyola Academy. One second from half court. Ah! Jumping for joy. With First ever. A two on one. Oh. Oh. Did he bring it in? He did. It is. And I'd like to welcome you to Rooster Field on the campus of Royal Academy. The largest so when, 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 no shave November. This afternoon's Class A quarterfinal football matchup featuring the visiting Hawks of Maine South High School and our Royal Ramblers. Fans, Maine South High School, Royal Academy, and the RHSA uphold the highest standards of sportsmanship. We thank you for supporting the players, coaches, officials, and all participants in a positive manner.
Negative or derogatory actions directed at Oh, I see. Student athletes, coaches, or other fans. Oh, I see what you did. So you're just going to wait. Ball starts on the 40 for kick out. You could do that. I would just do 40. For all of our students. So down in distance or not applicable. So ball on 40. your caps as we honor America with our national anthem. Leading us today. In our national anthem is soloist and she's a senior here at Lyell Academy, Evelyn Preco. And she will be accompanied by the Loyola Band. Excellent job. That girl's going places uh, after graduation. I think so. That was amazing. Wow. Not easy to do in a sellout crowd like this. <laughs> this is Soldier Field, but there's a lot of people here. That can be nerve-wracking, but she pulled that one off. Well done. So here we go, partner. Beautiful Horster Field. Kyle Smith alongside J.D. Dawn. Want to give a big thank you to all the other people that are working for us today. Hayden Bales, Brandon Januska, and, of course, Wendell Davis Jr. Your prediction was 47-41. You said Maine South, right? That's who I'm thinking takes away this one, barely. We'll see if I'm wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if I am, but... <laughs> There's a little bit of psychology here, too, because I was watching when the Hawks come in... They planted, they had a few flags when they ran out. They planted the flag, flag right at May, uh, midfield. So they're sending a message. The Ramblers have won the toss and have deferred to the second half. So the Ramblers defer. And it'll be main south ball. I think I disagree with that. I like to put points on the board yeah. and, and try to yes. see if 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 main south and Purcell they get a, they struggle a little bit and the, and the moment becomes too big for them. And make your adjustments in the second half. But it's again, it comes down to strategy. So this is what they opted to do. We'll see how it pays out for them when we get to the halftime mark. Well, we'll see. I guess they want to give their defensive confidence. You're going to have to see Purcell eventually. Yes, you're going to have to deal with him. He's going to be a force today. I still think he will be a force no matter what. Michael DeLumo, the senior running back. A little guy, shorter than me, but he runs a lot quicker than I do. I, when you're lower to the ground, you can get through those gaps faster, you go underneath some guys, and it's amazing how fast you'll be when you are a little lower to the ground. Kicking game is gonna be important. So here we go, kicking off from left to right. The Ramblers to the Hawks, and kicked off by Zach Zeman. Up. Oh. He's gonna kick and decided not to. Now we go. This one's a pretty nice kick. And it's gonna get into the end zone. It's automatic touchback at the high school level. Up to Purcell. Look, you don't have to throw it every down. Well, hang on, we got an injury already. Oh no. On Loyola. I mean, that is not what you'd expect. That's number 41 on the ground. Everybody's important. Clutching his wrist. Drake. It's one of the linebackers. From Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Training yeah, staff out now. Help, unfortunately, I didn't catch what exactly happened there, but I just looked over. I saw he was grabbing his arm or his wrist. Something had happened, maybe making a block or trying to get in the way or something, and he just went down. 
Every a, asset of the game is so important. Yes, every player, every piece of the puzzle you need to have there. Special teams, you don't think it's that important? Here's an interesting stat for you. The year the Chargers missed the postseason back in 2010, they were first in total offense, first in total defense with points given up. They were 32nd ah. in the NFL in special teams, points for, points against. See, it's all, each team matters. We always focus on offense and defense, but these special teams guys, they are hugely important as well. Again, one miscue, one misstep, and that could be ball game in some situations. Right. Rex Grossman, let, let's call a spade a spade. He wasn't exactly <laughs> a Hall of Fame quarterback, but there were games with De where Devin Hester would return a kick and yep. return a punt for a touchdown in the same game. 100%, yes. And it's all about, again, it's all about the fundamentals, all about finding that right spot, that right time. And if somebody on the special teams squad can get it done, that's what it takes. Oh, boy, he's not getting up. No, Colin Drake still down, medical staff, attention. They're, they're giving him the attention he needs. I mean, he's moving around at least. It's not where he's, you know, flat on his back, not responsive. But he is certainly in some kind of pain. Yeah, one of our sideline reporters, Hayden Bale, says it's his arms. But the fact that he's not moving it, partner, it's probably yeah. a broken arm. Could be. Uh, he's up now, but yeah, he's clutching that left arm up against his midsection as he walks off the field. Not being able to flick the wrist back and forth could be a broken wrist. Wouldn't surprise me at all, something there. Look at this teamwork and the sportsmanship for both teams. Yep. Pat him on the head, nobody likes to see injuries. No, man. first play out of the gate too. I mean, as we say, a special teams play, you don't, you don't think of an injury, but now here we are. Here to pick up their brother, right? Yes. It's going to be a tall task. Number 15, uh, he's no amateur. Uh, no, not at all. This guy will carve you like a Thanksgiving knife. Here we go. Delomo, usually in the backfield, but this time it's Cole Mutchler. Purcell with time to the sideline. It was Ooh. almost picked off. On the coverage was Max Mendoza. Not a great start for Parts Purcell. Goes back to my point. I think defense here, they're looking into things. They've got a, they've got a plan in place. They're keeping their eyes on things. They want to make sure they're ready for anything and everything coming at them. Start aggressive. Look. Max Mendoza brings up second down, 10 yards to go. For Bates out from around 20 yard line. Should be DeLumo now in the backfield. This time, run and play. Nice push up front, DeLomo, off a tackle, past the 40, past the 45. It's not just Jamison Purcell you need to worry about. You've got the running game you got to deal with, too. When you get low, you bust through a tackle, and you keep going, keep those legs churning, and that's exactly what happened here. Well, one play looks like a pick, another play. 20 plus yard gain, up and down we go. So could it be a running game today? Might the passing game take a back seat? Here we go, back to the five wide receiver sets. Purcell, here comes the pressure. He's forced out of the pocket. Bad decision by Purcell. You got to throw that bait, that puppy away. So once again, now we've got two pass plays in, two pass plays that didn't work out. We also talked earlier, how is this defense going to respond to someone throwing the ball left-handed? And here, here we are, a couple plays in. Sack committed and forced by Tommy Gislandi from Faith, Hope, and Charity. Also on the pressure was the defensive back, uh, Max Mendoza also is a defensive back on this team. And I don't think the other 31 is Miller Miller. I think that's a... <laughs> Must be a bit of a typo. A little bit, yeah. I don't think... Uh, <laughs> then again, Mom called parents might have, had, <laughs> might have had some fun with that one. Here we go. Nobody in the backfield. They like doing this a lot. Second and 24, timeout on the field. Main Absolute killer. Wow. No excuse for it, JD. You got the play clock yes. right in front of you. The clocks are big, they're large, you can see them. But again, this could be some of those nerves coming out. It could be some of them trying to feel out where things are. Maybe a confusing look by the defense. So second and 29, clock stops at 10.49. What do you draw up here? Not a lot in the playbook for second and 29. You gotta throw it. <laughs> that's, that's all you can do. And now, down the sideline, one-on-one coverage. Well, you want to throw it, but you don't want to get the ball picked off either. I was going to say, now you want to make sure you get that throw down enough where it's not picked off by the D, and the D has been tight. So far this uh, this drive, the D has been tight on everything except for the one running play. Donovan Robinson, he is an excellent player on the coverage that time. Third and 29, I think you just do a draw play and you punt here. At this point, yeah, you don't want to give too much. You don't want to show too much. You live to fight another uh, possession, so to speak. 
but surprises could happen. And maybe you do break off another 15, 20, 25 yard run with this one. We'll see what happens. Purcell, no surprise there, handoff. And the Lomo gets a couple of yards, not nearly enough. And in punt formation, we'll go the Hawks. But it gives you a little better field position to punt that ball away, punting into the wind, mind you. We'll see if that's a factor here coming up in the next few moments. But what a job by, by the defense here. I mean, this is, as we talked about, they had a plan, I think. They came in here. They're, I mean, first drive in, they're trying to execute. And so far, it's working out for Loyola. In the punt will be David Petrowski. Not listed as a punter on the depth chart, a D-lineman and a tackle. Pretty good snap. The kick gets past midfield all the way back to the 30. Robinson to return. Hesitation move, not a lot of running room, and he does the wise thing, just get 10 plus yards, help out your offense. Yep, we also got some laundry on the field on this one too, so we'll see if this one gets backed up at all or maybe pulled a little forward. Pretty good punt by a guy that usually plays defensive line. And not lucid as a punter, it wasn't bad at all, but we'll see what happens here now with the flag on the play, if this is gonna help or hurt the Hawks. There might be a name or number change because Henry Hughes is listed as the backup punter, but he's 78. <laughs> so, okay. So maybe he forgot his 78 number and has to waste some more. Maybe he had to wear a today. different jersey. Could be it. I don't know if you want your left tackle to punt. But you know what? <laughs> These left tackles and defensive linemen, they're athletes. <laughs> Apparently so. Hey, if you got a leg, use it. Number signal is holding against the Ramblers. The little block in the yeah. back. That penalty is accepted. So they were 0 for 2. Yeah. <laughs> Surprising. Usually when there's a block in the back, usually there's a lot of running room. Uh, usually a big old lane, not in this situation. Like a hold, yeah, it's just a basic run up the middle on the return. Sure. A block in the back, it goes from no running room to a to lot of running To all kinds of freeway <laughs> to run. Yeah. Here we go. A little bit of what you can do, maybe we can do better. Five wide receiver set for the Ramblers. And now they get their tail back, back uh, next to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald handoff, a gap run as McPherson can't break off the second tackle. Nice penetration up front by the Hawks. I think you're going to see the Hawks here are going to swarm to the ball. They're going to be prepared for the running game. I also wouldn't be surprised to see them try to go after the quarterback a little bit from time to time. They're going to go to that ball wherever the ball might be. It was Cantel and Coco Cialis on the tackle. Second and eight at their own 29, one in the backfield. Just a beautiful day for football. It could certainly be cooler. We know that this time of year. <laughs> Dangerous pass up in the air. And that is picked. Just hit the ground trying to save it was Max Savore, the senior cornerback. Woo. Not a great pass by Fitzgerald, but it was a better effort on defense by the Hawks. 100%. Diving after that ball, incredible. Just so close. Third and eight, you want to convert, but the longer you pass the ball downfield, these are some excellent defensive backs yes. remain south. Yes. Sometimes and you want to just do a little pass in the flat. Something small and simple, little chunk plays do it. You don't need everything at once. And they've got the wind at their back here, the Ramblers do. So this could be beneficial, but it also might impact the ball throw a little bit. It's Gerald. Surprising play call, not even close to the first down. I would have liked to see them get it to McPherson in space and see what he could do. Yeah, give another run to the back and just see if he can take it further. But I mean, whatever game plan they've got, they saw something on that defense that prompted that call. Friendly spot, they say he gained five. Regardless, it's fourth and three. You're at the wrong side of the field to want to go for it. Aggressive. Aggressive might be an approach, but not this early on. Purcell looked a little bit shaky on that first drive. I feel confident in my defense thus far. Yes, at this point, for sure. Zach Zeman on the punt, it's short. As it's inside Main South territory, it rolls close to the sideline and then out of bounds. So what did you see from both teams' offenses? Offenses are struggling so far. They're trying to find their rhythm, and I think that goes back to the point from earlier. Defenses are playing well. Defenses on both sides have done their homework clearly, and again, defenses win your championships. So these defenses are playing hard. Now it's up to the offense on both sides of the ball to figure out what can we do to carve through these defenses. Wind picking up a little bit. 
Whether you're looking for a student checking account or your first debit card, or a savings plan for college, they've got you covered. Stop by the open Wintrust Community Bank to learn more. One in the backfield, as it's the backup tailback. Over the middle, completed. And they say Naughton's knee was down. I think they'll spot it past the first down marker. And the chains do move, so here we go. Great job by the offense to find somebody in the open field, find someone to throw it to, be more selective. You don't gotta be so fast to get that pass out. Look, make your reads, find the open man. Gotta get to the 48 to extend the drive. One in the backfield. Handoff, DeLomo, tough to bring down. He's slippery, but a nice tackle. Got the ankles of DeLomo and a nice open field tackle for the Ramblers. That was a great one, keeping your eye on the ball, watching him. They'll teach you all the time. Coach will tell you, keep your eye on the midsection of that guy you're, you're trying to tackle. He will tell you where to go. It was Charlie Pryor on the tackle. Second down, it'll be second and eight at the 44. Not gonna see a lot of Max Protects by Maine South today. No, I don't think so. How about this formation? A little pistol. Purcell to the left on his back foot. Look at that throw on his back foot, still on target. And an amazing job too between quarterback and receiver to come up and make eye contact and find out where they need to be. That was a wonderfully done job. Yeah, Mason Patras on the reception, six foot one, 183 pounds. One of his favorite targets. The tight ends, they're gonna come into play today. See if they can get him to him tonight. First and 10 at the 47. Purcell and Main South, now they're in a rhythm. Purcell with time. He'll step up into the pocket, nice move. Purcell past the 40, still on his feet, was his knee down. Close to the 35, regardless of the first down. This guy is fantastic. He read that defense perfectly, and that was a great execution by the offense. Spread those wide receivers out, get those defenders looking for that pass. It left a wide open area up front right by the line, and boom, he takes off. How about this for his towel? He's got <laughs> spots. A little racing flag almost. He's a catch me if you can. <laughs> He's going to be off to the races. He's got swag, doesn't he? Yeah, a little bit. This guy knows. I'm telling you, he can get it done. Do we call him polka dots or spots? <laughs> Might call him spots. We'll call him spots for now. We'll they, see. They look, yeah, you're kind of right. I think they look more stripes than spots. But more we'll, checkered. We'll go. Away. We'll go with it. This is really interesting. Tr four. A, a quad, quad, quad to the uh, right. Yeah, quad formation over there. Second time now. Interesting. You know, the game has changed with analytics. In the old style of football, coaches would call timeout yes. to avoid the delay game. Yes. Now, now coaches see the value in the two-minute drill, so they're avoiding calling timeout. Yeah, which is... For fans, for those who are used to watch it, it's a little bit confusing. Why would you take the penalty? Why would you let that happen? But again, it's all about the analytics of it and trying to find out how you can get it done deeper into the game. You never know if you're going to need that timeout late in the game. 100%. Late the half. That's exactly what it is. Purcell with time to the other side of the field. And not sure if he was trying to throw that away or if it was a lack of communication with the Lomo. Either way, you slice it, incomplete pass. Doesn't make the connection on that one. You don't know if wind is a factor at all. But again, offenses are still getting settled in here a little bit. Uh, we've certainly seen a couple of big plays from the Hawks so far, but they're still figuring things out. 6.22 remaining. It'll be second and 15 at the 40. And we'll see if defense can hold it all here. Purcell, five wide receivers, one in the slot. Purcell with time, over the middle, diving catch and a beauty by DeLomo. Right between the two defenders on that one here again, quarterback knowing the field, knowing where to throw that ball and finding guys who are ready to be open and make that catch. Everybody contributing right now. Good luck for any defense playing the Hawks this season. And it's like you say too, once this team gets in a rhythm, once they start throwing off the defense, look out, they can be explosive and in a hurry. So here we go. Third and five at the 30. Direct quarterback sneak, he's a little short. Too far for a field goal, you're too far down the field for a pooch punt. Ah, uh, they're gonna give it to him. Wow. They're gonna give it. Can't challenge it at the high school level. <laughs> no. Remember, if his knee is down, but the ball is expanded. Yes, yes. I still think he was at least a half yard short. I thought he was a little short too, but the official saw otherwise. 
I mean, so the way that Maine South's running the ball, even if it was fourth and short, they probably would have gotten the might, first yes. anyways. First and 10 at the 25, what do you want to call here? It could be another quarterback keeper on this one. One in motion, that's DeLomo. Purcell, pump fake, Purcell over the middle, right on target. Purcell again, this time to his wide out at Petrus. Rinse, lather, repeat, right down the field yep. like they've done all postseason long. And they're long. picking them apart right there in the middle. They're spreading those receivers out. They're putting them into motion, creating more of that confusion for the defense. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's keeping his eyes peeled. If there's any kind of opening, any kind of gap in that line, you shoot it. Take three, four yards if and when you can get them. Mason Patras on the reception. Let's get credit to this offensive line. Only one sack given up thus far for Maine Sal. Tons of time for Purcell. Purcell, this time the pressure comes. Uh. Purcell, he gets out of it. And he just throws it away. Sometimes, partner, you got to throw it away sooner than that. The yes. pressure came. He got out of it that time. He's a little bit nifty and quick getting that, to the edge, but these defensive ends are good too. That's just it. He, I think he knows he's got a little bit of, uh, how do you want to say it, wax on the arm. He's got a little bit. He knows how, how much time is on that clock in his mind to get rid of it. He's a wheeler and a dealer. He's trying to get through there, trying to find the right spot and give his team as much time as possible. Wasted a lot of clock on this drive. 4.37 to go. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Feet. Wear that clock down, it's not a bad thing. Whoever's got that ball last could be key component today. Not the, not the one seventh line. Fakes the handoff, just too good. Gets out of bounds, very smart quarterback. No need to take extra yardage. No yep. need to take a hit, just get out of bounds, live yep. another day. Don't risk injury, don't hurt yourself. You've already got enough yardage, get out, stop that clock again. It's interesting, though, how much we've seen the quarterback keep the ball so far here in this first quarter. Constant towing coins. He's there on the field. He's handled it very well. He's athletic. Purcell's just a little bit better playing the quarterback position. Better eyes, better vision, seeing and knowing where his players are. Watch out for coins. It strips to the left. See if it goes from quarterback to former quarterback on this play. Pressure comes. Purcell over the middle, picked oh. off. Here come the Ramblers. Down the sideline. He's got Looking room for to go. A pick six. One man to beat. Touchdown, Charlie Pryor. What a swing on that play. Defense, defense, defense. Watching the quarterback's eyes. That is the one thing that could give him away. And in this case, it did. Looking to where to throw that ball. Right place, right time. Hasn't been a great day defensively for the Ramblers thus far, but when they need a big play, they got the sack by Gisaldi. Yep. What a pick six. It looked like Maine South was gonna take another first lead of the game like they did the previous two games. This time, pick six. Defense, defense is gonna win this on either side. I really do believe it could come down to one key defensive play and we might look back at the end of the game. This could have been that key defensive play. Uh-oh, was there yellow laundry on the field? Now I think it would be on the return. I don't. I think the interception would stay. Interception would stay Here put. Here we go, but yeah. yellow laundry. So we got the touchdown motion graphic, but it might be coming back. Oh, no! Wow. So everything we just said, Kyle, forget that. Oh, boy. No pick six, no interception so at all. forget everything we just talked about. That all gets scrubbed away. I wish that not just at the NFL level, but the high school and college level, they reevaluate this rule. If it's way past the interception, sure. Can we can we say unsportsmanlike conduct? But, yeah. But keep the interception. Yes, because this is what a game changer now in this situation. Hand off to Delomo. Things aren't going Loyola's way. They lost one of their best special teams player the first play of the game, and now the pick six. Not even a pick. Scrubbed away because of a penalty. I don't know if there's an easy way to resolve that issue, but if, if it's still roughing the quarterback, sure, but I think it should be on sports for like conduct. I would agree. It, it, you can take a good hard look at, you know, when is the ball picked off? Where's the ball at when the foul occurs? There's a lot of details and nuances that, of course, at the end of the day, it's all about keeping players safe. So it's second and goal, ball at the six. Just a game changer. Can Maine South take advantage? Delomo up the middle, Delomo to the goal line. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown, Hawks! 
Well, a matter of seconds, things have reversed. We thought there was a, a touchdown for the Ramblers on that pick six that wasn't. And now here are the Hawks putting up the first official points of the day. Got to find a way to regroup. Look, you knew that uh, Purcell was going to score some points. What a swing, though. When you score on defense, that's less points that your offense has to score. Exactly, 100%. Talked about missed PATs. Will it happen on this play? That's what I'm curious to see. Again, I was watching both teams in warm-ups. Both teams were doing well, but kicking into the wind here, not a problem. So we'll, stay, we'll take a quick break. You're watching the Ramblers against the Hawks here on SBS. Just mute and then go to break. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America. Kyle Smith alongside J.D. Rudd. If you missed any of the action, just hit that rewind, fast forward, or pause button for you. Missed, if you've missed it the last two minutes, you have missed a lot of action. <laughs> There's been a lot that has happened the past couple of minutes, both uh, positive and negative, so to speak. But yeah. I, th I still think the teams are figuring each other out. There's still, it's what you're going to do in the first quarter of a game like this. What would have been something great uh, for the home team, Turned out to be not thanks to a flag on the play, and now you got the visitors striking first. So, Loyola didn't do much on offense, and another rule that I think they need to evaluate is the automatic touchback once it goes into the end zone. I know you want to keep the players safe. Unfortunately, it's a game that's not safe, so no. injuries are going to happen regardless. It, that's the trade. It's a full contact sport. I mean, you're you're putting person on person. There's going to be people are going to get hurt. You want to minimize that, but you also want to keep the spirit of the game up. So I'm with you there. Let them run it out. Let them bring it back in. See what they can do, especially in an all important game like this. It's also uh, Pryor that returned that who had that pick six. Yes, that went away. See how the Ramblers respond. Looked a little iffy on offense their first drive. Maybe some nerves. Maybe some jitters. We'll see if they can shake him out. Another quarterback keeper right up the A-gap. I know he's a big guy. I'd like to see him get to the edge. He's, he's quietly fast, a little sneaky fast. I'd like to see him get to the edge a couple of times. If he can do that, if he can break free, listen, all you need is a couple of few yards every time. Three, four yards every down. You'll get you a first down. You keep it going. It's not conventional. It's not what they're used to. But this is a game where sometimes you got to change the game plan because of what's on the line. Second and three. A lot of friendly spots today. Got seven on that. Hard count by Fitzgerald. McPherson. And not didn't get much. Maybe one. See where they spot it. Ball placed at the 29. So third and one. In shotgun formation, but it'll probably be a quarterback keeper. If he finds a gap, if he sees an opening, wouldn't be surprised. They're going to pass. And that one deflected. What do you want to do here? You give the ball back to Purcell. That's the guy that can go right down the field and make it 14 nothing. You're so close to your own end zone, you got to get rid of it. You got to kick it down the field. Could do a hard count, try to draw him offside. You still have all three timeouts. We talked about the analytics of the game. When you don't call a timeout earlier in the first quarter, now you can consider going for it. If they're not fighting on the snap count, sure. then you can call a timeout. Sure. Or do you save that strategy for later on? You don't want to do it now necessarily get them used to it, make them expect that. But we'll see. They're back on the field, probably a snap count. I'd be absolutely shocked if they went for it. Seven to go on the play clock, it. and they went. Let's see where they spot it. I think oh. he's short. At first, he was way short. It was a tackle for loss. Chains move. Wow. Ice in his veins, his coaching staff, Bo DeShiro. Well, or as you say, there's some very uh, generous spotting by the officials today. <laughs> That's been a couple of times now we've seen something that looked maybe a little tight. 
go the positive direction for the team with the ball. Hopefully they'll be nice in a couple of days at Soldier <laughs> Field. Actually, that's tomorrow. Yes. But not when Jordan loves a quarterback, well. only when Caleb Williams is yeah. a quarterback. <laughs> First to 10. That's right at the 30. And that's uh, driven out of bounds. Got it to Wilt Carlson. They spotted the 31, but it was more of the 30 and the half yard line. Hey, he tried to send the ball out a little bit, try to get a few more yards off of that. And as we say, just watching both teams figure each other out here a little bit. You get confidence in a situation like this. You're in no rush if you're Loyola. You want to just limit the possessions for Purcell. Yes. The less they have the ball, the better when it comes to the Hawks. McPherson, don't let him get to the edge because when he does that and when that's allowed, that happens. Trying to find a little bit of a spot, trying to find a little way to go, but yeah, the Hawks right there to gobble him up. How confident do you feel if you're the main South coaching staff? A lot of things going your way early on. Things are going your way, but it's still an early game, and anything could change. One snap, one play, the whole dynamic can change. So you still keep the game face on, Keep the plan you had in place. Make any adjustments as needed at halftime. Hawks led by David and Sarah, head coach Fitzgerald. Nice tackle. That is a big boy at quarterback. And able to bring him out of bounds, Santino Bernabai. Gets the first down, ball spot at the 42. Once again, another uh, option here where the quarterback takes a look at the field, keeps that one. So they're actually going to spot at the 45. And it'll be second and seven at the 45. It's Gerald, handoff. McPherson still on his feet past midfield. Close to the first down. Great footwork there. Made three defenders miss on that one. Third and short. They tried the passing play on third one. That was not successful. The quarterback keepers have been very successful thus far. The quarterback keeping the ball has been surprising, but it's worked out for both sides. So now to short yardage situation, curious to see what they decide to do here. Maybe an RPO type of thing. Switch the formation. Get both tight ends on the edge. And off McPherson in space. And brought down past the 40. Still got a long way to go, but now they're past midfield. Now they're past the 40. The Ramblers start to roll a little bit. We have our first in-game report with Wendell Davis. Wendell, what do you got for us? Early 7-0 lead for the Maine South Hawks. Hi, it's Wendell Davis. Pretty much what I've noticed for the first drive, you know, Maine South started off with a nice big run. but It was offset with penalties. Loyola went three and out. Maine South, the second drive, Attacked them with three wide, four wide formations, empty sets, and they're attacking up the middle. Pretty much gashing them with slant routes, crossers, quarterback runs, scrambles up the middle and runs up the middle. And Loyal is starting to get a good drive coming in their second um, second drive as well. And also the biggest thing that I noticed too is time of possession. Main South held the ball for almost nine minutes in that first quarter. So I would say Loyola has to get more stops on defense if they want to compete in this game. Well, uh, about the roughing the passer, you had a better look than we did. Why did they call it roughing the passer, and what does Loyola have to work on to avoid that? I really believe, um, I think it was a time, it was a tic-tac call, but I believe, you know, as the NFL has, you know, when you when, when a guy comes and tackles the quarterback and brings the body weight on him, I think that's the biggest thing, okay. and that's why they called it, you know, and I think that's a big emphasis in, in today's game. It's not like the 80s or the early 2000s where you can go out there and just lay a guy out. So I think pretty much it's just a, it's a tic-tac call, but you just got to be smart about that. I would say keep playing aggressive. That's pretty much a referee's choice. But Yeah, they're going right down the field. Wendell, thank you so much. We'll take a quick break. Second quarter coming up next here on SBS slash NFHS Network. The innocence of youth. This high school gym used to be packed most nights. Not anymore. Do you know why? Because bad behavior by fans, especially adults, has caused a shortage of game officials across the country. You see, without officials, we can't have sports. Don't let this become reality. It's time for a change. Let's bench bad behavior for good.
Kyle Smith alongside J.D. Rudd. Wendell Davis does a nice job for us, and he had a better angle on that uh, pass interference that we did. That's what you got to look out for. You can't barrel the quarterback. Yeah. You can't push him into the ground. Player protection. So that's all, that's what it's all about, keeping the players safe, so I get it. And as Wendell said, this isn't what the game was 20, 30 years ago. It was all about hard hits and laying these people out. Right. Now it's about longevity in the career or in the profession. I don't argue with the call. I just think we need to have committees and – yeah. Keep the interception yes. Yes. at 15 yards, maybe yeah. from the spot of the foul. Sure. Because so basically if the quarterback got sacked at the 20 and the ball was picked off yeah. at the 10, so it would be 15 yards from the 20, so it would have to be the half the distance to the goal, so be, the ball would be spotted at the 10. And it's tough, I mean, because you don't, you want to keep players safe, but you also want to make sure that the defense can still do their job and play. Right. I mean, you don't want defenses to hold up. That could create all right. kinds of other, other holes and things. Is the roughing the passer affect the play? Yes. Anyways, Loyola's got the ball. They're looking to answer. They were up 7-0, but then the the uh, call was made, and that's a pass over to the left, and nice completion over to Carlson, still on his feet. Driven down to the turf by Gavin Smith. As clock will run with 11.47 to go. You know, we haven't seen too many long chunk pass plays so far this afternoon. You know, we're only one quarter behind us, but a lot of this has been ground game for both of these teams. When has died down a little bit, is the field goal still in play? I would think so. I mean, you're gonna take points however you can get them. Second and six, handoff, McPherson. This time, good penetration up front. And it was started by Tyler Fortis. Third and manageable, you got your senior quarterback. Do you put him in his hands and try to get the ball in the end zone here? You know, given how these teams have played this year, you want to say this is a passing situation, go for the end zone, but uh, back to the analytical approach. You want to play smart, get the first down, get the yardage, and the ground game has been working. I wouldn't be shocked if there's an opening, keep it on the ground, run it forward, and try to get that first down. So here we go, McPherson in the backfield. Watch out for three on the play. He might be their go-to target. It's Owen Joyce, the senior from Catherine Cook. Makes the handoff, terrible pass. Even if it was completed, there were a couple of defenders to tackle him. Right there, well behind the line. Good call though, and watching out for number three. They just couldn't make that hook up on that one. So now you're at a critical fourth down. Fourth and five. It's a long field goal. Nothing, of course, guaranteed at the high school level for kicking. It would be a 41-yarder if you attempted it. And I don't see they're making any uh, kicking changes here at all. I don't see the kicker coming out, so I think this is going to be maybe a go-for-it situation. Look, Dan Campbell's got a good kicker. He still goes for hey, it all yeah. the time. Hey, and you trust your defense in most of those situations. Could be the same thing here. Watch out for the tight end in the slot. Yep. Fitzgerald with time to the sideline. And it is completed. There you go. Past the first down marker, completed to Gavin Vrandenberg. So the Ramblers are gamblers, and it pays off in this situation. How about this awesome name, Vrandenberg? Hey. And he's, his grammar school was B. Zayed. All right, then. It's definitely not a John Smith name. Uh, or a, no, it is not. Or a Tom Hamilton <laughs> High School. No, it is not. First and 10, handoff to McPherson. A gap run, still on his feet. Maybe just give him the ball more because he is hard to, to bring down. And that's uh, similar to what a play he made earlier. He's got some nice quick feet. He's able to see those. He's able to adjust quickly, find the open areas, and gain one or two more extra yards. Well, if the Ramblers don't win their third straight state title, they sure are the stylish team in the, I just say, with the, <laughs> the yellow and the maroon. Sure, they make it work. There's no doubt. Definitely one of the most stylish uniforms. It's, it stands out. McPherson again, no surprise here. McPherson to the edge. McPherson inside the 10, taking defenders with him. Inside the five, man is this guy good. It's all about the feet. The feet and the training payoff. He keeps those feet churning, keeps those feet moving, keep going downhill, keep moving toward that goal line, and take a few defenders with you if you have to. There is a penalty marker on the field. Penalty marker most likely holding against the Ramblers, but we'll see, and it is indeed holding. Well, as we talked about earlier, anytime you get an open lane like that, sometimes you gotta look and see, was somebody a little bit extra handsy, a little grabby, 
Such was the case here. So now that big run coming back. There's so much action in the trenches. One of my favorite radio show hosts is John Yurkovich at ESPN 1000. And he argues that if you really wanted to call holding, you could call holding on every play. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, having played offensive line before, oh yeah, there's all kinds of grabbiness that goes on down there. It's all about what's really at Burton and what's not. So this time McPherson out in space as he gets inside the 15. Well, it's going the way the Ramblers wanted it to go. A Lot of clock going off that jumbotron, giving McPherson less possessions. Yeah, keep that ball as long as you can and limit the amount of time the offense has the ball. So it's going to be ball on the 14, third and six. Now you're in a friendly spot for your kicker. You'd like to get a couple more yards if you can. If you're going to kick it, sure. But I think the, the goal here is going to be end zone. They want to find that fader Do you match go for where you two are. if you score a touchdown here? Not yet. I don't think so. You don't want to, you don't want to be falling behind seven to six. Every point is critical today. McPherson. Up the middle. Oh. I don't, uh, are, I, I, I'm not against that call because if you're going to go for it, it's two play territory regardless. Yep. yep, just couldn't make that bounce off the uh, off the offensive line, off the uh, fellow players, so to speak. Couldn't find that cut well enough, and by the time he did, the defenders were there to meet him and shut it down. So this is surprising. They ran the ball on third and six, and then they bring the field goal unit in. I guess they want to give him a couple extra yards. A little closer, or as we talked about earlier, do you do a hard count? Do you try to get him to jump a little bit? Do you do something? Or do you straight up take the three points? So here we go, Zabin will kick. Zabin will kick. Good snap, the hold is there, the kick. No good. Wow. Wide left. We'll take a quick break. It's still seven nothing Hawks here on the NHS Network. Welcome back, Kyle Smith, along with J.D. Rudd. Main South with the ball, Purcell on the play action. Purcell down the sideline. He's just a little off today. A little bit, don't know if wind is a factor, don't know if it's nerves, don't know what it could be, but yeah, they're not able to make that A to B connection like he's normally accustomed to doing. He's wide open, that's not on Naughton, that's on Purcell. Yeah, yeah, not putting the pass in the right spot. Second and 10. Don't need to be overly aggressive here. Just don't turn yeah. the ball over. Yeah, don't go for it all. Again, chunk plays are your friend. You've got time on the clock. Don't give up something here. Purcell with one in the backfield. Delomo on the run. And he is stuffed right at the point of attack, but he keeps churning those legs and his offensive lineman helping out. Third and long coming up, JD. Couple extra yards on that one, but yeah, not as much as you'd want. And now if you're the Ramblers, defense, 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 because you're so close to your own end zone, shut these guys down, get that ball back with good field position, and hopefully tie this game up before too long. Couple of things not going the Ramblers' way. They missed the field goal. Yep. Pick six, that was not because of rough of the passer. Technically, they could be up 10-7, but yeah. what it could have should have, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, close only counts in horseshoes and grenades, not in football. <laughs> One of the famous sayings is my fellow <laughs> color commentator does work for me. He says, if it's in butts, we're coconuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Would we not? <laughs> this is so true. I've never heard that before, <laughs> I but like it's that. an amazing uh, saying. It's, it's true. Because there's always so many if this, but that, if this, yeah. it's You can make excuses all day long. I mean, coach used to tell us all the time, uh, excuses are like armpits. Everybody's got a couple, and they stink. <laughs> so it's that's how it goes. And they're only down 7 nothing. Could it be 7-3? Well, kickers miss kicks. It happens. Yes, it's very true. But I think in that situation, go for it. They The kick, I don't know if that was a good choice. We'll see how it comes back at the end of the day. But you're so close to an end zone, should have gone for it. Been a little shaky passing the ball today. I can understand attempting the field goal. Sure. Third and 11, I think they're going to be conservative here, but we'll see. Go for short. Purcell down the middle, right on target. First down and more. 
But like you talked about, JD, right in stride, let Patras do the rest of the work. Yep, right in the middle. They've tried a few things to the outside, hasn't paid off, but the middle has been open. So if they found a soft spot in that defense, look for them to exploit that now for the rest of the afternoon. So here we go. It's a first down coming up for the Maine South Hawks. Handoff, DeLomo, tripped up in the backfield. Nice job there by the D lineman from Loyola Academy. And it's the big boy getting a tackle for a loss. And it was done by Nick Richter from Edgewood Junior High. Just enough to get those shoestrings, bring him down. That's all you need. Grab the tip of that toe, trip him up, stop him. That's all you got to do. So it'll be second and 10. Ball spotted on the 36. Purcell a little bit shaky, but as is Fitzgerald. Rolls outside the pocket. He's great at this. Right on target. Nice tackle to avoid more yards after catch. The tackle was delivered by Max Mendoza, but a nice throw on the run by Purcell. I think the Hawks feel more comfortable in those outside pass plays. They haven't been able to get that working so far today. If they can find that and get that fixed up, then we can see the explosives take off in the second half. Third and three. Ball on the 43. See if they use Purcell outside the pocket again. Stack of the box is Loyola. Now they uh, shag off. Bad snap. Ball loose. Delomo tackled from behind. So you try a little trickery there. You try to confuse the defense, and you almost cost yourself. A little early for trickeration, too. It's only a 7 nothing game. It's not like you're up 21 no, or 28. No, not at all. So to do the whole look to the sideline, fake call, direct snap somewhere else. That could have gone a complete different direction. Another injury. It just seems like with Loyola, they take one step forward, then two steps back today. Every single time something goes their way, something big then doesn't go their way. They're only down seven nothing. They had a chance to get that pick six. It was called back. They missed the field goal. We'll take a break. We'll let you know who the injured player is after this. This high school gym used to be packed most nights. Not anymore. Do you know why? Because bad behavior by fans, especially adults, has caused a shortage of game officials across the country. You see, without officials, we can't have sports. Don't let this become reality. It's time for a change. Let's bench bad behavior for good. How's it going, everybody? I'm Kyle Smith. Wendell Davis for our second in-game report. Wendell, what do you got for us? Hi, so one thing I noticed on Loyola's second drive going into the second quarter, keep feeding Drew McPherson the ball. He's running the ball really well. He's getting the, he's getting the ball in the pass game. He's really helping them on offense. One thing I noticed, too, they're holding themselves back with all the flags, the holding calls, the offsides. they got to eliminate the penalties because Maine South, talent-wise, is no much, not that much better than them as far as, you know, on play on the field. We have to get better with the flags. Real quickly, were you surprised at that play call on third and three? I was surprised. They tried to get too cute with direct snap, quarterback not looking, and it came to bite them. And now they got to punt the ball. So Loyola has to take advantage of this, um, this drive right now and be able to come back and score. And the biggest thing for them, too, on defense, get off the field. Third and long, giving up first down passes up the middle. That's been hurting them all game. If they, if they can get off the field, they will have a chance to win this game. So it's offside against the Ramblers. Wendell, thank you so much. We'll see you later on in the second. Yeah, offside. Or the penalties right there. So. Yeah, they just, they're just, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. Wendell, thank you so much. Fourth and three now. Punt unit back on the sideline. Well, they're going for it now. I don't know if they'll actually go for it, but we'll see. See if you can get a jump again. <laughs> Why not back get to back snap more? counts? Why not get five more bonus yards? That might be what they're trying to do here. Purcell looking at the sideline. If it's a snap count, usually you don't do that. Usually you know your snap count before Usually, you. but throw off the defense. Trickery. No. Play clock at 15. Yeah, if you were at midfield, I'd consider it near the 45, no. Play clock down to seven now. And will they take a timeout or will they take the delay Play game? Play clock at one. 
And you know, JD, I asked that because we talked about earlier in the broadcast, yeah. sometimes taking the delay a game is more valuable than burning the timeout. Yeah, to save those all-important timeouts, but now under four and a half minutes to go until halftime, you got a few in your pocket, okay, why not? Right, just never know. You get that weird fumble that goes your yeah. way, you recover it, but you're at your own 25, yeah. and now you only have two timeouts instead of three timeouts. And you wish you had that extra timeout. Yep, it's all it's a gamble. Everything in this is a gamble. The play call is a gamble. When to take the timeout is a gamble. So Maine South called the timeout. We'll get that fixed for you on screen. So both sides have a little bit of decision making to do at this point in time, kind of figure out where they are. You know, you've got the under four and a half minute mark until halftime. You've seen enough from both sides, offense and defense. Now you start, uh, the coaches do, start thinking about those second half adjustments. What adjustments do you think that Loyola's gonna make? Offense has been a little shaky, defense has been pretty darn good. Defense has been solid for the Ramblers, no question there. You've gotta get it going more on offense and you've seen the running game work, so do you pivot more to that? Do you do something that might be uh, more play action maybe? Do you do something to make it look like a run that's not? And I think for the Hawks, it's all about getting more points on the board however you can. You're already up on the home team, get more. So it indeed is Henry Hughes this time around. Henry Hughes, this punt, and it's a good one. One hopper to Robinson. As returners, no one there to block for him, and nice open field tackle by Gavin Smith. So now you're going to have about four minutes and change to see if you can work your way down the field again. You and that last drive, you, you took a gamble that didn't quite pay off with the with the field goal. So now we'll see what they do. We'll see if this is going to be uh, maybe come out throwing or do they just try to run this ball? I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Ramblers keep this ball on the ground a little more often, chew through that clock, get the team to halftime. So with 4.22 to go, get it fixed for you in a second. It's first and 10 at the 23. High snap, panned off to McPherson. That's been working. The, that and the quarterback sneaks have been working the most for yeah. Loyola. Having the ball on the ground is working for them. And like I say, in this situation, all you need, three, four, five yards every go. Keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving, and limit the time that the Hawks can get their hands back on that ball. Talked about Purcell. He was red hot coming in. They scored 47 points. Sorry, 49 points against April North. 41 against West Aurora. He had six touchdown passes against North. Second and five at their own 28. Showing blitz is Maine South. Handoff again, rolling forward to a first down. This time they go to the backup running back. A nice this handoff. might be the game plan and moving forward. This might be what it is. Keep that ball on the ground, eat up that clock. You've got to, you've got, you've got to catch up to where the Hawks are, but you don't want to give them the ball back unnecessarily. Luke Foster was the man of the hour on that backup run. No need to rush. Remember, automatic timeout. On the first down. first down, yeah. Ball to 34. One in the backfield. As he motions his tail back to go to the left. Fakes the handoff. Fitzgerald somehow got out of that sack. We got Avoids a flag. it again. This is coming back, Kyle. One of the linemen was trying to save his quarterback, reached out, grabbed a whole handful of jersey. Wonder why the University of Iowa was looking at Ryan Fitzgerald. Yeah, that's yeah, why. That's why. But can he complete pass at the college level? Sometimes, party, you got to trust in your quarterback. When you hold, you're just pushed back 10 yards. Yeah, but in that situation, there was a defender coming right off the end of that line, would have made a B line right to your quarterback. So as, your, as an O-line guy, that's your first goal, protect my QB. So sometimes, yeah, you get a little bit handsy there and you grab on. It's a penalty, but it might have saved your quarterback from injury. That penalty moves the ball back. First and 20 at their own 24. You can't be too conservative because then you get Purcell the ball back. Yep, yep, but now, you, so now you're going uphill. You got 20 yards, you got to get here, but at the same time, keep it on the ground. It's still first down. Will Carlson, pitch play, interesting play call. Read well by the Hawks, lost yardage. Excellent open field tackle. He was not fooled on the tackle. Matthew Schladenhardt. 
What do you want to do here? Second and 22. Keep it on the ground. I mean, get this game to halftime at this point. You don't want to give the ball back to the Hawks. You don't want to find yourself down 10 nothing, 14 nothing going into the half. You don't want to be in that situation. Second and 22. Long way to go. Keep the ball on the ground at this point. Chew through that clock. Takes the handoff, short pass. McPherson, another nice tackle. This time, Mateo Jelenkovic. Third and long, are you surprised that Maine South didn't call a quick time out there? A little bit, but at the same time, I think both teams have the same idea of let's just get to halftime. Let's just reassess where halftime is. Let this clock run down. And I think if you're Maine South, you're feeling good. I mean, here you are, you're up seven nothing. They've not put points on the board yet. This is good. See if they call a timeout here. You don't have to snap the ball yet for Loyola. They snapped it a little early for my liking. Pump fake by Fitzgerald. Still with He's time, rolling Peru. out to the left. And he'll run with it. Don't go out of bounds. And he gives Maine South a free timeout by going out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know why you don't just go down. Just drop. Let that clock run. Either that or force Maine South for them to call their second timeout. Yeah, that's true too. Interesting mistake by Fitzgerald there. Or was it just eyes downfield just trying to get as much yard as he could maybe? Maybe thinking yeah. he can make up for this. Maybe if he goes towards the sideline, maybe the defender is so in awe of that. Uh, they, yeah. they missed the yeah, tackle. They, missed. they let up, they let down, and maybe he gets a few extra yards perhaps. We saw that, that on that Monday night game, ravens Bengals, where they thought they were going to tackle him down yes, the sideline. Yes. And, and he keeps on trucking. Good snap. Rugby-style punt. Shanked it, and he picks it up on two hops. DeLomo past midfield, plenty of time for Purcell. So now if you're the Ramblers, you're getting nervous. Now you're getting a little scared because now you still got over a minute to go. You got a main South team with two timeouts who's been finding some good success on the ground game. I wouldn't be surprised if we see main South put another few points on the board here before we go to halftime. Main South takes over first down, 10 yards to go from the Atlanta 47-yard line. Now that said, if you're the Ramblers, all you need is one good defensive play. Strip that ball away, pick off a pass, bring down that quarterback in the backfield. First and 10, gotta get to, what do you think, JD, the 20 yard line to consider the field goal? I would say at this point, at least the 20. Purcell with time, Purcell going for it all, down the middle, overthrew him. Trying to get it to Patras. That stops the clock, and you almost scored a touchdown there. It stops the clock. The wind could have been a factor on that when he was about three steps behind the ball. That could have been close. That could have been instant points there for Maine South. And you're seeing, I think, from the from the coaching staff, not afraid to go for it. Why not? What do you have to lose right now? You're up 7 nothing. Why not take a shot at the end zone before halftime? The way this Loyola offense is struggling, 14 nothing might yeah. be more than enough points. At this point, yeah, you're right. You gotta Rangers. feel somewhat confident if you're like, oh, you've, hold, you've held Purcell to seven points. Defense on both sides, help it out. Nice completion. Are they gonna burn a timeout or are they gonna spike it? If you spike it, you waste it down, you have to go for a yeah. four. You've still got a minute, you've still got time, you're not in desperation mode. Scoring points would be nice, but it's not a necessity. Third and five. Purcell with time. Purcell, bad there it throw. Is. Robinson takes it the other way. What did I tell you, Kyle? Defense, one good defensive play for the Ramblers is all it takes, and now look at where we are. Mistake by Purcell. He's just a sophomore. He can barely drive. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Another flag. Oh. Did he bump into that receiver before he picked it off, or did his teammate bump into that receiver? Oh. You gotta be kidding me. Third time now or fourth time where there's been a big play for the Ramblers and then it's followed up by a flag on the field. Now if it's a block in the back, the return stands, but no touchdown. Yes. If it's holding, it's a first down. That's yeah, a whole different deal. Touchdown! Now, there you okay. go. Woo! All right, so Maine South cheated. Okay. <laughs> Way too many men downfield is the call. Okay, so first finally, <laughs> something goes the Ramblers' way and yeah. you can hear the sideline erupt. Interesting decision. If you go for two, you get the lead, and maybe Purcell thinks about that at halftime a little bit more. Yeah, maybe so. Just kind of reassess where things are, but here we go. conservative. Yeah, why not? Try to get Zeman some confidence back on that missed yes, kick. Yes, yes. 
And again, you don't want to find yourself down a point. You want to get to the end of the game and go woulda, coulda, shoulda. I had kicked that extra point instead of going for two. Zeman for two. You know, go for two, darn if you do, darn if you don't. There's a lot of Bengals fans that were mad at <laughs> the decision by Zach Taylor to go for it. I was kind of for it, but I was also somewhat against it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times you keep even pace. Stay neck and neck. I, I get trying to win it all. I get trying to be up one. But there's, in my opinion, there's, there's much more you could lose in that situation. Nothing is a chip shot. But nothing is guaranteed. That's just it. This isn't a, for sure one extra point. No chip shot in high school football. Snap there, hold there, kick. Straight through the uprights. JD, we're all tied at seven. Whole new ball game. I mean, 38 seconds left to go. Anything can still happen here, but now what a game changer. What a game swing. And I tell you, it's, it's a shift of balance. Even though the score is even, you had the Hawks who were feeling good. They were rolling. They were doing well. You had the Ramblers who were thinking, gosh, what do we have to do? We can't get a big play. Well, the defense got a big play, and look at where we are. Now the Hawks are going, oh, goodness. And now you've got the Ramblers going, okay, we got this. We, we can do this. What do you want to do if you're main south? Do you take a knee? You can't really, though, because Loyola's got three timeouts if Loyola wants to be aggressive. I think you keep the ball on the ground a little bit, burn through that clock, let them burn timeouts. Don't give them a chance to get that ball back. At the same time, don't make mistakes. Watch out where you're throwing the ball, and if the ball's on the ground, keep your hands on it if it's a running play. Man, oh, man. So in 30 se 38 seconds from now, we'll get our halftime report from Wendell Davis does a very nice job for us. What a swing. This, day, this game's gone back and forth all day long. I'm telling you, defense, Kyle, this is going to come down to defense at the end of the day because these are two explosive teams, but defense is what's going to be the key to how this thing finishes out today. And when you get too cute or when you get too non-creative on offense. Rambler snuffed out that third five, pick six. Hey, listen, football's a game of X's and O's. A, B, C, keep it simple sometimes and that'll work. If Loyola wants to, they can force the Hawks to get a first down. This will be returned from the 10 yard line to the 25, DeLomo. And he gets past the 30 actually. And you got time, clock stops on a first. You you question Purcell's confidence, though, after the two pick sixes he's thrown. A little bit, yeah, because he's had he one that was called back, one that actually went through it, so okay. But at the same time, this is a guy, this is a kid that knows his stuff. He knows his skill set, and you can't get in your own mind like that. Okay, fine, you had a mistake. Maybe the receiver goofed. Maybe you didn't put enough mustard in that ball. You still have to have confidence in yourself to go, okay, you know what? I know who I am. I know I can get this done. If he turns the ball over again, do you consider going back to the senior and constant toy coins? Maybe, but then that's a big confidence dejector to your team. That's a big gut punch for you. I wouldn't pull him. Now, if it gets way out of hand, an ugly different story. Purcell, well read. He gets out of it. Purcell looks to run with it. Instead, he'll throw to the sideline. Oh, boy, what a throw that was. Uh, that was a lucky play for the Hawks, for sure, because that one could have easily gone the wrong direction. How about this? He tried to get it to coins on the play. That stops quite make the, the clock, connect. but they did burn a lot because he had to go from one side of the pocket to the other. And for the Hawks, the best thing is you didn't lose any yardage. You didn't give anything up. You're not farther back on the field, so it's all right. Loyola will probably call a timeout unless it's a first down for Maine South. I could see that. Try to see if they can get their guys the ball back. Force Purcell to get a first. He's make very him, shaky. Make him throw that ball. Purcell with time. Now he'll roll outside the pocket. Looking for a man instead. Yeah, he, he's off today. I don't know if it's nerves. I don't know if it's the wind uh, picking up. Something is miscalibrated for sure because the passes aren't where they should be. They're always a half step behind, a little bit off target. That is a confidence killer, but at the same time, a guy like him, he knows how to fix it. And I wouldn't be surprised in the second half to see him fix it. It's 7-7, seven, seven, but it's only 7-7 seven, seven because of a flag. That's exactly it. You're 100% right. Could be 10 nothing. could uh -huh. be 14 nothing. Uh-huh, penalties. Penalties and missed kicks. Loyola's got to feel even more confident after that pick six by I Robinson. It's a huge boost to them for both sides of the ball. Fakes it to Delomo over the middle. Will Loyola call a timeout? I think they will, but we'll see. And th this is why I would call a timeout, J.D. I want your point of view on it. A million bad things can happen in high school football on a punt. 
It could be a bad snap. It could get blocked. The punter could drop the ball. And Loyola does call one of their three timeouts. And we'll stick with the action with nine seconds left. That's what makes high school football so great. You just never know what's going to happen on special teams. It's, it's the old proverbial box of chocolates. You could get anything. And I wouldn't be surprised. I, depending upon how things go here, keep it on the ground. Why not? I mean, don't worry about the punt. Just turn it over that way. Maybe you get the two yards. Maybe you don't. And then make your defense make a stand. I've seen a lot of football, J.D. I can't remember a time where a team had two pick sixes, but then one got called back on roughing the passer. <laughs> uh, if we've talked about it a few times this game. That's It's a rule that needs to be looked at because of situations like that, but it's where we are today. That, that was the right. call. I mean, it's a couple different ways you could look at it. One of those would be on the defense. Train your guys, teach your guys, know what the penalties are, be careful of the quarterback. In this day and age, the quarterbacks are like Fabergé eggs, <laughs> hands off them as best as possible. I mean, you want to make the big play, but when you give up something like that, gosh, it's it's just it's hard. So we'll get our halftime report in nine seconds. Wendell Davis put on the Northwestern uh, tire. It's getting a little chillier here in Wilmette. This is a little surprising. I go for it. Why not? Fourth and two. Purcell. Burn some more clock. And incomplete, so. So a few ticks left, that's all. Do you take an E if you're Loyola, or do you go for it all with a Hail Mary? I could see maybe taking one shot, but uh, at the same time, okay, it's, it's, again, it's, it's high school football, so it gets picked off, it gets ran back for six. You don't, you don't want to deal with that. So maybe just take that knee, maybe try one running play, get your team to halftime, get in that locker room, and kind of reassess where things are. It happened last year, if you remember that, that uh, Black Friday game, Jets-Dolphins, Tim Boyle at quarterback, and it got picked off at the one yard line, and then the Dolphins took it 99 yards on a Hail Mary attempt. And see, it's just one play, one a game-changing swing play like that, so it's about being smart right. with that ball. That's the thing, like on Hail Marys and, and kicks, field goals, when it's blocked or returned, you've got offensive linemen trying to make tackles. <laughs> Which, that's not what they do. That's, that's not what they do well. That's just, you know, that's something that head coaches have to think about yep. when they do Hail Marys or long field goal attempts. Time to throw. Will he heave it to the end zone? Yep. He will. And picked off. Tackle down the play. And it's an interception by Mateo Jalankovic. We'll stick with the action as we have Wendell Davis for our halftime report. Oh. Almost lost my wallet, but I got it back. Wendell Davis, what do you got for us? 7-7 seven, seven at halftime. 7-7, seven seven. yes, we have a low scoring affair right now. Really a game of what ifs. Will it be 10-0, 14-0, possibly 17-0? Loyola, you know, they had a pick six early in the yep. game, roughing the passer, which was called back, which allowed Maine South to score. Then they went ahead and missed a field goal, which, which really should have been a 7-0 game for Loyola, turned to 10-0. Now it's 7-0 with Maine South leading, and then they were also being gassed as far as time possession in the first quarter. Maine South held the ball for nine minutes out of the 12 minutes. That's not good. Flax has killed Loyola in his first half. There's nothing Maine South is doing that's killing them as far as talent or having better players or better play calling. It's simply just getting off the field on defense and just not having, you know, being smart, not having penalties. Real quickly, what did Purcell read on that third and five where it was a pick six by Robinson the other way? I think pretty much he just read the quarterback's eyes. The quarterback was locked in on that receiver right. the whole time. He ran a route. He had a great break. You know, he, you know, and again, possible roughing the passer. Oh, wow. They, they, you know, I they, think they, they, they picked the flag up that yeah, time. They the flag up, so he got the pick six, which is much needed for Loyola to get on the board. The offense has been very stagnant. You know, Main South has done a good job of stopping the run, keeping everything in front of them. So if they can get going on offense, they should come out with the win. What do you think Purcell read on that play? It was third and five, and it just – not enough velocity on it, Robinson picked it off. Yeah, third and five, you know, typically as an offense, you know, the offense trying to run routes to the sticks to get the first down. It just wasn't a hard throw. You know, running an out route like that, you got through with some zip on the ball. The throw wasn't strong enough, so he made a great break and made a great play. Wendell, thank you so much. We'll hear from you in the third quarter. Of course, we're thank take, you. We're going to take a five-minute break and more halftime analysis coming up next here on What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? 
to better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. This is heart. This is pride. This is community. This is high school football.
Kyle Smith alongside J.D. Don. This is the halftime report brought to you by the NHS Network. Surprising start. 7-7. Seven, uh, seven. Yeah, I would say very surprising. I mean, not what I expected. I thought there'd be a lot more uh, points on the board. I thought we'd see a lot more in the passing game uh, because it's not an overly windy day by any means at all. But we've seen a lot more of the ground game, and we're at a 7-7 seven, seven score. So the defense on both sides has been holding well. Uh, we talked earlier, penalties have not been favorable for the Ramblers. And then making that connection uh, from quarterback to receiver for the Hawks hasn't been working too well either. We talked to Wendell Davis at halftime. The flag, according to Wendell, it was going to be roughing the passer. Have they talked to the coaching staff at Loyola? Be like, look, we're going to call it again. You guys got to know this now. Yeah, I think at this point in time, because if you if you get too many of those penalties, it's going to kill your team. It's going to be detrimental to them. And I think it wouldn't be a bad idea, yeah, for the officials to run over and go, listen, if this is what your defenders are going to keep doing, we're going to keep calling it. And if this is what the ball game has decided upon, then it's what the ball game's decided upon. Purcell's been shaky. Less confident than you would like. Uh, less confident than what we've seen in past games, especially where he was last week and the week before. Don't know if it's nerves. Don't know if it's weather. Uh, uh, there could be some unknowns, too, that we're not even thinking of. Maybe he's under the weather. Maybe he's not 100%. Maybe there's something going on in, in the personal life that's just getting in between his ears. We don't know what it is, but there's something that is definitely a, a half of a millimeter off today, and that's that's been detrimental. If you lose today, season's over. I know you don't want to go to the senior, but he's thrown two pick sixes. Do you consider at least warming him up on the sideline in case you need to go to him to, to win today? It's all about winning the ball game. It's all about how much farther in the season can you go. So let's play that hypothetical out. Let's say you make that change and you do win today's game. Then you got a problem for next week. Who's your quarterback next week? You could create internal controversy. You could create internal right. problem. You don't need that as you're trying to go farther in the playoffs. Well, you do know you got Purcell for two more years. He's just going to get that much better next year. And that's the flip side of the coin. You can look at him and go, listen, I've got you here for a while. You've done great, but here's what I'm going to do for my senior. So you sit this one out. If we win, great. If we don't, there's next year. It's happened before. We've seen it where Brady went down. They brought Drew back in. Yep. And Brady was dealing with the ankle injury. There was talk maybe that uh -huh. Drew, that uh, Bill Belichick would go back to <laughs> Drew Bledsoe. He didn't. Nope. Tom did not play great in that Super Bowl. They won. Yes, but he didn't play great. But now that's all a fuzzy, distant member <laughs> because now we all know but, who Tom. He's a household name. Right. He's but, a color commentator now. He's got all those accolades under his belt. So, but once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, there was a debate. Yep. Of going of, back of, to Drew Bledsoe. Of should this kid be in there? Let's get Drew. Because if you yeah. remember, I think they were five and four. That Tom Brady rookie year. Technically, it was a second year, but he didn't play yeah, in, in the two thousand. Yeah. There was talk of Belichick going back to Drew Bledsoe. Yeah. He just signed that yeah. six-year contract. We bring all this up for you folks because if it, ha if it can happen in the NFL, it certainly can happen in high school. It's, it's how you manage players. It's a coaching thing. It doesn't happen what level you're at. You, you've got to put your best players on the chessboard, so to speak. So whether it's a young kid, an old kid, your best players have to be out there. And sometimes you've got to move the pieces around to make it work. It happens all the time. We saw Jalen Hurts get benched for Tua. Yeah. Then Tua went down in the SEC championship game. Jalen went back in. And then Coach Saban went back to two us. Yeah. You can do this kind of stuff. Yeah. And just because Coins goes into the game doesn't mean he's going to be the starter next week. That's where as a player you got to realize that this isn't personal per se. This is business. This is what does the team need to win. And at this moment it might not be me, but later on it could be. You've got to be flexible. Well, for now, Purcell is the quarterback. He was warming up. Two pick, six, two pick sixes. One got called back. What kind of adjustments did he make at halftime? Meanwhile, Loyola gets the ball. And the only time Mainsal scored was because the pick six got called back. I would say right now, advantage to the Ramblers because of where they finished off that first half. They get the ball back now, but they have to capitalize. Squib kick, interesting. Dropped it. Live ball in his own territory. And remember, the ball's automatically dead. In as the NFL and college, if you recover that in your own end zone, it's a safety. Yes, but in high school, whole different ball of wax, so it's in there smart just to leave it alone, let the refs blow the whistle, and save yourself on this one. Not something they might have to talk about in committee because that could have been a 9-7 lead yeah. for Maine South. This could have swung the whole game, but now here we are. We keep things tied, and that's kind of a whoo if you're the Ramblers. Just like, like we said, back and forth we go. Every time we think the Ramblers are in the driver's seat, that happens. They stumble. There's just something <laughs> getting their, their own worst enemy today. High snap, handoff, 
So times it's just one of those games. I remember the AFC Championship game, Colts Patriots, where the Colts were out 21 to three, and then Jeff Saturday recovered a fumble. Oh, yeah. I forget who fumbled. I think it was uh, Joseph Adai who fumbled, and then okay. Jeff Saturday recovered, and then they went end up beating the Patriots. And in it's game. a game changer. Again, one play, one dropped ball, one missed ball. Anything could happen. Second and five, ball to 25. Wouldn't that be something if we get a defensive battle today? McPherson. It worked in the first half, not on that play. Uh, no, not. They're trying to get that ground game going, but I think the halftime adjustments being made by both sides, tightening things up on defense, especially. I, again, my point has been all day, defense is going to win this thing. Defense needs to stop here if you're the Hawks. So let's see what we got. We got third and five at the 25. Got to get at least four yards to consider going for it. And teams have been aggressive today. They have been aggressive. Uh, part of me wants to see a run here, but I could see them trying to throw a pass and look for a longer pass. Why not? Third and a very long four. Dangerous pass. Loyola wants pass interference, but it looked like he was going at to the, for the ball after the ball was delivered. After it was already there, and that pass looks like it might have been a little bit behind the receiver, a little bit. That could have been trying to avoid the interception. Either way, brings up fourth down. He is trying to give it to... Gavin Vrandenberg. But Vrandenberg. There's just some names in football you always remember. Yeah. Captain Munderland, the former safety for the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> they stick with you. They stick with you. Now, as we've said, nothing's given here on these kicks in high school football. Good snap. Rugby style punt. And that one will get this past midfield. They'll return this one. High return. Dangerous decision by Delomo. Yeah, but taking every yard you can get. I mean, that's I think that's where we are today, is these teams, offense, defense, special teams, any yard they can get is gonna be critical right now. Well, what do you think Coach and Sarah's talking to and asking his uh, young quarterback? Focus. Uh, I think find your rhythm, you know who you are. I think this is where you've gotta come out and you gotta shine. This is your moment. You had your first half, you had your jitters, Let's button down, let's get this one done because we know what's on the line here and it's it's, it's on you. You're you're the, the leader of this group of guys out there. You know, not just you, we're gonna run the ball too, but you're gonna have to make plays if we're going to the semifinals. Exactly. Terrible snap! Oh boy. Purcell just wisely covers it up and interesting decision. I don't think they would call it sportsman like on Charlie Daly, but he did touch the helmet. You can't touch the helmet at all on the quarterback. This is true. But no he call. Was already down though. But yeah, so it's yeah, no call on that one. So here again, this is where the things that happen, like when the wheels on the bus start falling off like this, when little errors start happening, this will put cracks in the foundation for these teams. So now you have a, a bobbled snap like that. So now what are you worried about here? My goodness. Second and 26 at their own 30. Just get the ball out. Don't turn it over. Purcell going for it all. Did he catch that? Incomplete. They're going to call him out of bounds, but that was a heck of a play. Oh what an effort. I mean, he had the ball in his hands. He just didn't have his feet in the field of play. Not in the intended receiver. Game swinger goes oh. from a first down to third and 26. Yeah, that is just, that's tough because you had it. It was right there. And now you're at a tough third down. But you're also seeing from this offense, okay, we can get guys out there. We can get the ball down there. Let's tighten it up a little bit more. Meanwhile, if you're the Ramblers, if you're the defense, you got to stop. This is key. Not only do you want to stop, they're most likely not going to convert here, but don't give up 15-plus yards. Uh, yes. Hand off. Delomo breaks off a tackle. They give up about 10, so pretty good defense by the Ramblers. Good defense to help out a little bit there. Now the question is, are you going to see a kick? Yeah. Are they going to go for it? You would have to be like a Madden artist to go for it on fourth and 14. <laughs> yes, but we've seen some strange things already today. If it was Purcell from two weeks ago from last week, absolutely. If they were connecting and firing on all cylinders, perhaps. Fourth quarter, maybe third quarter, no. Yes. He's got to be feeling the pressure. He's on the road. It's a ruckus yep. crowd here at Horster Field. But then again, it's not like Brian Fitzgerald's doing a lot for Loyal either. No, and that's the positive you have to focus in on. Nice punt. 
Robinson's gonna return it, surprisingly, and maybe a bad decision uh, by Robinson. Yeah, return it he tried, but return it he did not. Gotta know the score, gotta know your offense is struggling a little bit. Get the fair catch, live another day. Yes, that's 100% it. And I think in this situation too, you gotta try to find some rhythm. You gotta try to find some momentum somewhere. This has been kind of the, the ping pong ball, the tennis match back and forth. Each team I think is looking for a big breakaway play now. So someone's gotta do it. One of these offenses has gotta get hot or a defense has gotta come up big once again. The first and 10, ball at their own 19. Two in the backfield, they're gonna split them up. Hand off again, McPherson. McPherson, nice oh. vision, right up the middle. No one's gonna catch him. Touchdown, McPherson, 81 yards to the house. And just so everybody at home is aware, there is no laundry on the field. There are no flags on this one, so this, this is gonna stand. The fans are waiting for the flag, but <laughs> no flag this no time. Flag. Third time's My the charm. My goodness, that's the first offensive <laughs> points of the day from the Ramblers, the first big time play and one that did not have a penalty attached to it for Excellent the Ramblers. vision by McPherson. Oh, yeah. It didn't work on the B gap, he no. cut it up the middle. Came back in, found that open spot, and then once he saw daylight, he was done. Extra point coming up. Hold is there and the kick is straight through. We're gonna take a break. It's 14-7 Ramblers here on the NFHS Network. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Twelve million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Fourteen seven, nice run by McPherson, 81 yards to the house, giving this home crowd even more confidence. And for Purcell, time's ticking on your time. It's a boost for the home team for sure, and this is now a wake-up call for the Hawks. They gotta get something done. The thing you also have to worry about, it's not like Coins is a backup quarterback today. Might be a little bit tired at the wide receiver position. Do you want to put him at quarterback going from wide receiver? You wouldn't want to make something like that, but you got to find a way to win. you got to find a way to get that ball moving. So coaches can do almost anything. And, again, we're not in the regular season. We're in the playoffs. Everything matters. You can't just, well, you know, we'll fix it during practice and we'll get them next week. Can't. There is no next week if you don't get this one won. You know, winning in the regular season is fine, but that state trophy is what you're looking for. That's, exactly, that's the grail for all these players is what they want to do. It's what they want to get to. And it takes a team, yes, but there's always a leader on each team. Only one pitch position can elevate on the football field. That's quarterback. High throw, but Naughton catches it. Just a little out of sync today, but they do get the first down. They pick it up there, so they'll take that. And if they can get a little more of these, build that confidence, get that up there a little bit more, that could help. But yeah, they gotta find that connection. Something is just not clicking. How big was that missed field goal? Iola would be up two scores, and that those two scores would loom large for this young quarterback yes, in person. Yes, that'd be a lot to hang over his head, but that is not what happens. So this is where we are. You're down by just a touchdown. That's easily doable in this game. Back to the analytics again as Purcell handoff. Well read by the Ramblers, getting some inside penetration, able to make the tackle was Dom Maloney. Sorry, Mick Russian, Dom Maloney's the backup quarterback. They have a lot of multiple numbers on this Loyola team. Yeah, they have a lot, yeah, same numbers, yeah, but he was able to get there very quickly, bring that one down from behind, put a stop to that run, so that was a great job for the Ramblers defense. Well, like we bring up the analytics, 
If Maine South makes it 14-13, do you consider going for two to get the lead to give more confidence back to your young quarterback? See, I'm more old school. I would say no. I would say get the get the points that get you up there because you could you don't want to be behind. But at the same time, Adelix tell you something different. High pass. Did he catch it? He did. As he gets it to coins. Or did he drop it? I didn't see the... the yeah, they're going to say That was weird. No. He didn't see the safe signal no, by the, by the sideline judge. Yeah. I guess he was checking his fantasy lineup. <laughs> he must have been <laughs> scrolling through, seeing how the college team's doing today. Oh, I got to make a call. Oh, uh, incomplete. So Where's yeah. the signal? Uh, we'll get him next play. Right. <laughs> we'll do it get next, next time. time. No, I thought you were going to do it. Sorry, we're not perfect. Third nine. Big no catch. Look for a pass here in the middle. Why not? Purcell. DeLomo dropped it. Didn't matter. He was going to be tackled well short anyways. But these receivers can't get their hands around the ball today. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know what it is. But these receivers are just having a hard time. Good job on the pressure. If DeLomo had caught it, there were two defenders around him, including Kai Colkin. Went to River Trail School. Fourth and nine at the 32. So Wasn't a great pass by Purcell, and now the decision comes for Coach and Sarah. You're running out of time on your season. Yep, you, you, the time clock is winding down. The sands of the hourglass are coming to it. You know you've got to get something done. So wouldn't be surprised if we do see a change in the next offensive possession for the Hawks. Good punt by the defensive lineman slash punter. This time he shanked it a little bit too much and goes out of bounds at the 43. Loyola, you score again, even if it's a field goal, it might be insurmountable the way the Hawks are playing. The way the offense is going for Maine South, exactly right. This might be all that the Ramblers need is just a couple more points and they can sit comfortably. Then again, we can see things change on an instant, so you can never just rest in this game. You always got to keep your foot on the gas a little bit. But as we said earlier, I think for the Ramblers now, this is great confidence where they were at the end of the first half, how they've come out now so far here in the second half. If they can do something here to put some points on the board, they could become unstoppable for the rest of the game. First and 10. They're 56 yards away from the end zone. Carlson in motion. Pitch play. McPherson thought about passing. He'll run with it. And he's good at doing that. Picked up a couple. Yeah, you could see he, he put those eyes downfield a little bit. He was looking to see if maybe there was an option there. There wasn't. He kept it. They didn't lose yards. So. Overall good for the Ramblers, pick up a couple. The Maine South defense hasn't been the problem, the offense has been the problem. And that's just it, I mean, as we said earlier, there's only been one offensive score by the Ramblers today because the defense has been holding up so well for the Hawks, so they gotta get that fixed up too. Second and seven, like I said before, don't turn the ball over, don't no. throw it into a tight window. No, just keep, keep that ball in your possession as much as you can at this point. Carlson in motion, handoff to McPherson. Does this guy ever get tired up the middle? Still on his oh. feet! Tripped up from behind. Touchdown, save and tackle by Nick Hatch again. That might have been the dagger if McPherson had scored. He's getting tired of being tackled, I'll tell you that. He wants to find that end zone because he's making these cuts, he's going, he's finding those holes, but then these shoestring, these ankle tackles bringing him down. If you're just joining us, only offensive score for the Ramblers, 81 yard touchdown run by McPherson. And a pick six by Donovan Robinson. Fakes the handoff, time in the pocket, goes for it all, down the sideline, well overthrown as he was trying to get it to one of his wideouts in Conlon Kane from St. Anthansius School. Almost a very similar play to what we saw the Hawks do early in the first half where they were about the 45 yard line, took a shot at the end zone and just overshot the receiver a little bit. Second and 10, what do you want to do here if you're Bo Dashiro? Got an injury on the play here real quick. That's part of the reason for the timeout here. A Hawks player is down. We love football, but this is part of football that this we don't is, love. Yeah, this is part of the whole thing. So to get back to the game of play though, if you're the Ramblers, you want to convert obviously. You want to try to get something to get those sticks moving to keep that ball in your possession. On the flip side, if you're the Hawks, okay, you're struggling on offense. Your defense has been holding up. Now you got a defensive injury. You got to pull it together. You still got a hold of their quarter to play, yes, but every second, every play counts. So what they do here could be detrimental moving forward. Waiting for a number on the injured. Is it on the oh, 17? 17 for Maine South. 
Looks like he's up, moving that left arm. Might have been a shoulder injury or something. Just kind of a, might have hurt a little bit. You get it popped the wrong way. You, you take a wrong tackle. But he's rotating that left arm back and forth. Gavin Smith, the injured Hawk. He's made a couple of nice plays on defense. So maybe just give him a breather or two on the sideline, get that arm checked. Trainer working with him, making sure it's okay, and wouldn't be surprised to see him back in there pretty soon. Second and 10 at the Hawk 40. New running back in the backfield. That's Charlie Daly. No, I'm sorry. I thought that was Charlie Daly. It is McPherson again. I thought I saw 14. McPherson again. So tough to bring down, but he is brought down from behind. Nice tackle by Mateo Jelenkovic. And he got another injury. Another Hawks player down, grabbing his face. Same one who helped make the tackle. Jelenkovic, number nine, made the tackle. He's right there, so it's 58. And Nick Hatch again, he made that behind the uh, play tackle on McPherson. Those little shoestring ankle tackles, but now I don't know if he caught a cleat to the face or maybe just hit the ground hard. We'll take a quick break. You're watching the Ramblers against the Hawks. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Back to the action, 14-7, 5.52 to go. And now the clock continues to run because it was a running play before the tackle. Yes. So with 5.42 to go, one in motion. So that was eight. Handoff, McPherson, McPherson. And almost broke off that tackle, but a nice one near the 41-yard line and it was delivered by Max Savor. So the defense getting behind there, putting a stop to that. They have to buckle down. They gotta stop this running game because that's where the Ramblers have been going is keeping things on the ground. So defense making a big stop on third down. So fourth and 10, ball at the 40. Yeah, got a punt. In college and in the NFL, you try to be creative on these punts. In high school, just get just, it off. Just <laughs> punt the ball away. That's all you got. Don't get fancy. Just get rid of it. Too much can go wrong, and especially in a one possession game like this, you don't want to help them out. Try to do the pooch punt. And this will land near the 10. Going after it, really surprising by Delomo. Yeah, a little bit, just let it go, why not? You touch that and Loyola picks it up, that's the game. And then everything's changed, yeah. So that's a little a curious idea, but no harm, no foul, so to speak, in this situation, but still not ideal. We talked a lot about Purcell, the coaching. It's been fine, but I wonder if that if Delomo did that on his own or if he's been practicing and coached that to do that. Perhaps there could be something to work on. I mean, this late in the season, you never know. But it's not something that I think would be ideal in a in a tight game yeah, like this. Yeah, when you're up by three scores, fine. You can be aggressive yes, and go then, after yes. it. When you're down 14-7, absolutely Just not. Just leave things alone. I mean, you don't want to be pinned at your own one-yard line, but... Inside the 10, it's still not good. It's still not favorable, no. It's a lot of field to chew through now. Wind picking up, Purcell still in the game. Four wide receiver look. Purcell, outside the pocket, dangerous throw. Ooh. Deflected away. Nice read on the play by Charlie Daly, the linebacker slash tight end. 
So now you got to wonder, is Purcell thinking, okay, I'm trying to prove myself. I can make these throws. I can make, is he trying to will something into happening? And is that going to be costly for the Hawks? Because that looked like a, a bit of an aggressive play. It was like you, you recovered. You you shouldn't have thrown that ball, basically. But he, he can tried run, to by force the way. It. We've seen him get outside yes. the pocket and make yes. plays. Just get first down. Yes. You're only down seven. You're not down 14. No, don't force things. Don't help out your de the, the defense. Don't make plays that aren't there. Second and 10, ball at the seven. Purcell over the middle. Was there contact? There's the flag. I agree with that one, J.D. Uh, you hear the pop from up here. I was a little bit at first. I saw four red shirts in the air, and I thought, ooh, that's a lot of defenders to throw into. But in this situation, you get the interference call, so it pays off. Penalty flag. Nice job by our technical director and Hayden showing that uh, graphic for you. So second and 10, be an automatic first down. Not a spot foul. It's only 15 yards sure. at the high school level. Sure. But it's moving that ball forward. It's moving those sticks forward. And it's getting your quarterback away from that in line. He was standing in the end zone both times throwing that ball. If a defender comes through there and drops in the end zone, that's two points. Something that Donovan Robinson has to learn. It was quadruple covered. <laughs> Just trust in your teammates <laughs> yes. to knock that ball away or yeah. pick it off. Yeah. Handoff. Delomo. Delomo in space. Delomo. Past the 40. Gets to the sideline. Blocker in front. Inside the 40, what a play by DeLomo. Oh, you might as well call him Gensu. He was slicing and dicing. He was moving all through that stuff, finding holes, finding ways to get through. What a big chunk of yardage, and that is how you bail out your quarterback. That's how you give a team boost to everybody on that Hawks sideline. Michael DeLomo, by the way, the text line's open. Your favorite high school, college, or NFL memory, text 330-957-7653. All FCC regulations do apply. First and 10 at the 30. Man, did the Hawks need that. Badly. And if you're if you're the Ramblers, you're going, oh boy. Every time we think we got this team beat, they pull that. To the end zone, open. Naughton! Not a signal Hang yet. Hang on. No signal. They're talking. I think he dropped a touchdown! There's a lot of conferring with the officials over there about whether he was in or not, but they're going to give him the touchdown. And he had his hand up. He was wide open down the sideline. As soon as he broke off the line, he put his hand up. Purcell saw him, led him perfectly. What a touchdown catch. Ice in his veins, Purcell. Things have not gone his way today. Picture perfect throw. No, it's like we said earlier. He's got a chip on his shoulder now. He's got something he's got to prove. And I wouldn't be surprised if he said, Coach, give me one more chance. Let me get this done. And now look where we are. We talked about the analytics. They're going to be conservative. Take the one. By the way, not a chip shot in high school football. By no, way. it's not a gimme, but it's it, the odds are certainly better here than trying to go for two. Naughton on the hold. Good snap. The hold is there. The kick. Straight through the uprights. We'll take a break. Don't go anywhere because this game is going to be quite a finish. This is heart. This is pride. This is community. This is high school football. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then click on quality. Click on the highest quality that's available for you. And number three, wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast. If your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet, do the following steps. Number 14-14, just when we thought we had this main South team figured out. It's all about those chunk plays and swinging things around, building confidence. And we said at the start of this game, Purcell's a quarterback, can get things done. He struggled in the first half. Now he's making things work. Now he's figuring it out. First year at Horster Field, we have lights, by the way. And this might go to overtime where we turn those lights on. Wouldn't be surprised the way things are playing right now. Robinson, nice tackle. 
All right, what do you want to do if your coach, uh, D. Sharu, with Ryan Fitzgerald? I think at this point, you got to get him settled down. You got to make sure he finds the right targets. We saw in the last possession, they kept on the ground a lot, and maybe that's the key to this, keep it on the ground. You're not behind. You're not ahead anymore, but you're not behind. So if you can keep that ball moving downfield, it's okay. But if you make one or two errant passes that don't go the right way, you're turning the ball back over, or you throw the ball in the wrong spot, that turns it over. The goal now is not to help out the Hawks, so don't turn that ball over. A lot of assistant coaches. Of course, John Holacek, who used to be the head coach of this excellent Loyola program. See how the Ramblers answer after that 30-yard completion from Purcell to Naughton. Fitzgerald with time, quick pass. As here comes McPherson. Couple of yards, he just doesn't get tackled for loss. No, that guy is moving, he's like a tank. He keeps those wheels going, it's hard to get him down. I think he just keep giving him the ball until he can't go any longer. And that's what we've seen, so that was the last possession, that was early in the game, just put it in number 34's hands and see how far he can get you. Drew McPherson, the bell cow back, 81 yard touchdown run. Now Second at some point, five. fatigue could set in. Again, just barreling his way through for the first down. He's gotta be at least somewhat tired, that 81 yard touchdown run. You would think, but at the same time, if you got that adrenaline going through your veins, if you're helping your team out, this is what you're gonna do. You keep those legs moving, you can be tired later. You can be exhausted later. Right now, your team needs you, you get it done. I always think of the famous scene from the movie Miracle, where we might, we might not be the best hockey team, <laughs> but we're gonna be the most conditioned. <laughs> That's what's taking place right now. Yeah. Is Loyola the best team in 8A? Arguably, maybe. The most conditioned, maybe. They're keeping it going. One in motion. Here comes the reverse. Main South su snuffed it out. Nice open field tackle. They were not confused. Max Savore on the tackle. No, and that's another play on the ground, keeping that football on the ground. It's interesting to me we're not seeing many passing plays. It makes me wonder, have they realized the ground game is where it is today? They've tried different ways to pass the football. They tried the flea flicker, main south, very disciplined. They tried the reverse, very disciplined from the Hawks. Second and 10, see what they do here with Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald with time. Pitch and catch and a beauty. Deliver to Conlon Kane. Well, great job by the receiver just to kind of run downfield, come back a little bit, come back to that ball, leave the defender behind him and make that catch. And you see the defender there for the Hawks trying to say, hey, he pushed off me a little bit. The referee says, no, he didn't. What a beautiful complex here at Harster Field, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. It is amazing. First and 10, ball at the 47. Watch for a pass play this time. Thought about passing it, instead running it is Fitzgerald, he gets out of bounds. Good decision by Fitzgerald, they've been eyeing McPherson. Yep. And he, he brought a couple linebackers with, with him, allowed Fitzgerald yeah. to run to the sideline. I think he saw that opening over there, so you know what, I can pick up about five, six, seven yards, I'll just keep this on the ground, why not? So it was first and 10, waiting for the spots at the 40, so it should be second and three, and it is. Wonder who they'll get it to here. Probably it rhymes with Pick Learson. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see McPherson have it on his hands again. Then again. There's Fitzgerald, tough to bring down. Even when he's tackled, he gets a couple extra yeah, yards. He always rolls forward, always moving ahead. And yeah, part of that too is conditioning. Part of that is training. Learning how to fall in football is something that doesn't get talked about much. Fall forward, move forward, don't go backwards. If you're gonna get brought down, go forward. Get that ball ahead an extra, even half of a yard. It could be the game changer. Only touchdowns today. Zalumu on a six yard run, 30 yard touchdown pass for Maine South. Here comes a running play. Nope, Fitzgerald still has it. Nice fake to the sideline, past the 20. What a pump fake and a play action by Fitzgerald. And he had his receiver open who was on the side waving him down saying, I'm here, I'm here, give it to me. And Fitzgerald looked around the field a little bit and said, okay, I'll go this way. And it, it, it worked for him. They picked up more yards. Only way that play worked though, excellent fake by Fitzgerald. 100%, the defense bit hard on that one. A lot of the fans, I think, bit hard on that one. I don't think you're thinking three here. I think you're thinking six. You're, you get end zone, 100% end zone here. And take some clock with you. 
One in motion, that's Joyce. Hand off, McPherson inside the 10. Just trying to will his team to the semifinals. I think you're seeing a good mix here now. They've kept the ball on the ground for so long. The defense was expecting the run. Now they've done a couple of pass plays, caught the defense off, so now the defense goes, okay, maybe it's a pass. Then you come at it with a run. So now you're confusing that Hawks defense and you're moving the ball. How big was that touchdown from Purcell Huge? Oh, massive. Second and three at the eight. This time Fitzgerald with it inside the five, inside the one, waiting for the signal. Just short. But there he was again, trying to fall forward, trying to move ahead, and looked how many extra yards he picked up. He was pretty much down at the five, and he kept moving forward, and now he's about eight inches from the goal line. What do you want to do here, the brotherly shove? You know, if, if they were trained for that, maybe, but I wouldn't be surprised. Put it in the hands of 34 and let him run it in. I'm surprised they don't have all nine guys in the box. They're going to pass, surprisingly. And there nice you go. Nice completion. Over to Conlon Cave, Ramblers, back on top. And that might be why you don't put all nine guys in the box, because you know who's still behind there at quarterback who can make those throws. So the defense tried, but Ramblers make it work. So at the half yard line, they go to Conlon Cave. But we still got a game thanks to that touchdown pass from Purcell. It's still a close one. There's still a lot happening here. There's still a whole other quarter to play. But yeah, we've seen some pretty big key plays now from both offenses. Will we get that missed PAT you were talking about in the pregame show? It's, no, not a great snap. The hold was there. The kick. Ooh. Yes. Got it. That nice job close. adjusting off the, off the snap. That's a little nerve-wracking. But yeah, great adjustment. Find that ball. Get it through there. So the kick was good. We're going to take a break. You're watching the Ramblers against the Hawks here on SBS slash NFHS Network. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then click on quality. Click on the highest quality that's available for you. And number three, wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast. If your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel. Kyle Smith alongside Wendell Davis. Wendell, what a game we have for us today. Excellent drive by Ryan Fitzgerald. Right, we're having a heavyweight fight right now. Last minute touchdown score in third quarter by Loyola. But overall, to, be, to begin the third quarter, it was pretty stagnant. I'm pretty sure Maine South's playbook consists of three plays. I wish I wish I could see them take more shots down the field because when they did, they had a big time touchdown catch by Joey Nott in the end zone. But overall, it's been a great defensive contest. And we're in store for a great fourth quarter. Any uh, updates on the injuries? Um, not, not, not for me. I haven't heard anything yet, but if I get anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, just let us know. There's been a couple of injuries, including the first play of the game. Looked like the guy broke his wrist for uh, Loyola. Yeah, he took a pretty big hit. You know, he ran the guy over on kickoff return team. So I guess, you know, sometimes those big collisions can just yeah. break your body down. You know, kickoff's a very barbaric type of um, part of the game. So, you know, it's a rough time. So I hope he's okay and hope he can heal fast and return to play, whether it's you know, probably not the rest of this year, but if he has another year of season eligibility, come back next year and play again. Wendell, we'll see you in the fourth quarter, maybe yes, in sir. overtime. Thank you, thank you. 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Wendell does a nice job for us. 21 to 14 lead. Handoff. Delomo. Going nowhere fast. Tackle for a loss in the backfield. Tavi Gislandi, he had that big sack in the first quarter. And uh, coming through once again here, big time to help the defense out and make sure that ball doesn't go anywhere for the Hawks. See if the Hawks want to run another play. Probably won't. And I don't know what this is. They're waving. I don't know. Anyways, that does it for the third quarter. <laughs> you I ever don't, seen that before? I don't know what the hand up is. I don't know what that is all for, but like okay. The, that's kind of like a touchdown signal, but it wasn't. But it wasn't. I don't know what's. That's. I'm trying to figure it out. What's going on? They still have hands up. I don't know. All right. Anyways, we'll take a break. Fourth quarter coming up next here on SBS. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. 
then click on quality click on the highest quality that's available for you and number three wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast if your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet do the following steps number one click on the wheel icon located at the top right of your screen number two click on advanced and number three click on the highest quality available if you're still having issues type in the live chat thanks and enjoy the game Twenty-one fourteen. Kyle Smith with J.D. Dunn. If it goes to overtime, ball is placed at the 10-yard line, not the 25. Yep. And so that'll be huge for these guys, too, because that's, it's all about field positions, all about where that ball is. And right now, with the running game, hey, 10 yards isn't much. Close games. You love to see them. Down the sideline. Receiver had a half step on the defensive back, but overthrown again. I think we're going to see more of this, though. I think Purcell's got some confidence. I think he wants to get that ball downfield. He's just got to get on the same page of the receivers. Maybe it's the cold weather. Maybe it's the pace of the game. But the receivers might need to pick up the pace a little bit more, get down there and meet that ball. One big play is all you really need. A lot of resilience by this Loyola team. Look, things weren't going their way. Oh my gosh, uh, you could sit down in this game and stack up in a, in a big old pile of how much has not gone their way. And for them to have the lead right now, going to the fourth quarter, it's huge. Third and 11. Purcell with time over high. That's dangerous, partner. Not only with, is it dropped, but if the safety is hovering over over the top coverage, then that's picked off. That's tipped, it's picked, just ran back to the house. It's all kinds of problematic. Can't go for it yet. And so this is the downside to having a few of those missed and dropped passes. Now you find yourself deep in enemy territory. You've got to punt that ball away. Not ideal for the Hawks. And you're down seven, so any kind of points from Loyola is probably the game. Is is tough, because that's that's two scores you got to come back. And the way things have been going, it's going to be very difficult. Not only would Loyola get a field goal or a touchdown, They've been running five plus minutes off that clock. Chewing through it left and right, leaving less time on that clock for the Hawks to work with. Got to find a way to stop McPherson, maybe put eight in the box. Dropped it! Robinson, still on his feet. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde from Donovan Robinson today. No kidding, yeah, when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's not very good. It's, <laughs> it's not bad, bad, but it's not very good. We'll say that. Right, it's, uh... But here again, as we've seen today, defense could be the key. One big defensive play could still swing this thing. So I know if you're the Hawks, you're going, man, my defense is back out on the field. Here is a Rambler squad that's rolling. If you find a right defender in the right place at the right time, you can turn this thing right back around. Flip side, if you're the Ramblers, every goal right now is to get points. They've kept Purcell in check, only one touchdown. If you want to count that pick six, it's handoff up the middle. Because because the, the Maine South made it seven nothing, but it came after a pick six well, penalty. And think, I mean, all the missed points here that could have been that were on penalties or a missed opportunity for the field goal. It could, the score could be so much different right now. PA systems having a couple issues today. <laughs> That's okay. They'll get that work done. I'm sure. Second and eight. Ball in midfield. Hand off up the middle. Third and manageable. They've, been, they've had trouble with tackling Ryan Fitzgerald on the A gap runs. Do you call a quarterback draw here? Maybe uh, I could see that. At the same time, with the way the Ramblers have been, I wouldn't be surprised to see a pass here. You know, because you've been running, running, running. Now it's a third, it's a short, third and five. You would think run. Why not pass it to somebody on the outside, pick up the extra five, six yards? You could give defense. it to McPherson in space on a drop-off pass in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You see that? Regardless, if you're main south, got to get a stop. Stop. That's, the, that's what you need to stop. So they're going to run McPherson out as a wide receiver. Quarterback draw. Fitzgerald with time. Fitzgerald, first and ten and more. By, by the time the Hawks realized what was going on, they couldn't get enough defenders there. Fitzgerald had that break. Only way to bring down a big guy, you got to get low, no arm tackles. Yeah, no, arm tackles don't work. You got to take his wheels out. So take those ankles, take those heels, take those toes, anything low. 
He hasn't been perfect today, but the difference between Fitzgerald and Purcell, no turnovers from Fitzgerald exactly. today. Exactly. Game manager, it's an overused phrase, but it also is usable. But it's very applicable. High pass, still on his feet. Tripped up, and if not for the trip up, could have gone a long way. Could have gone even farther, but this is back to that game plan we saw on the last drive with the Ramblers. They ran, they ran, they ran, and they made a few passes that the defense wasn't ready for. So now we got a couple of passes the defense wasn't quite ready for. Wouldn't be surprised to see them return to the run game here and pick up three, four, five more yards. Don't have to score the touchdown. You just want the clock to continue yep. to run and get a field goal or a touchdown. Yeah, eat away that clock as best you can. Leave the Hawks less time to work with. If you're the Ramblers, you've got the lead. That's all you want right now is the lead and eat through that clock. For Maine South, one guy makes the tackle on a running play. The other guy's trying to punch that ball out. Yes, cause a loose ball foul. Get that ball back any way you can. Did they get the timeout? Timeout called by the Ramblers. We'll take a timeout as well. They've got two left. You're watching the Ramblers against the Hawks here on the NFHS Network. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then click on quality. Click on the highest quality that's available for you. And number three, wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast. If your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet, do the following steps. Kyle Smith alongside J.D. Dunn. If you missed any of the action, just hit that rewind button. There is a lot of action in this one. There's been some points where there's been some action, but some points where it's been kind of a, a sparring match, where it's been a back and forth and not much has happened. But we've certainly seen big plays when needed. We've seen big offensive plays. We've seen a few key defensive plays too. And I still think when this one gets down to the two minute mark, defense will be the key. We'll see what happens in this possession what's if the Ramblers can go up. Yeah, what's interesting about this game, when there's a touchdown, it takes a while before we figure out if it is or not. <laughs> That's very true. One in motion, Fitzgerald, handoff, McPherson to the 25. Man, is he good. And to the point you made earlier, I think now if you're the Hawks defense, you're telling your guys, get at that ball, strip it out, punch it out. We need that ball back. Yes, you want to bring the tackler down, but try to knock that ball loose. We need the ball. And for the Ramblers, ball security is more important than yardage. Yep, a couple of yards here, holding the ball. A couple of yards there, hold the ball. Don't give up that football. Even if they fumbled here, it'd be a long way for Purcell to lead this offense. One big pass, though, is all that he needs, and I think he's got it in him. We've yet to see a really big one, but he's, he could have it in him. One in motion, that was Kane. Up the middle, and pounding his way through tacklers. They go to the backup in Luke Foster. And they're gonna keep Foster on the field. Other good thing about that timeout is it gives their star running back at McPherson some time to settle down on the sideline. A little more time just to catch that breath, reset yourself. It's easy to get caught up in the motion of things here and kind of lose track of the game. Just take a breath, just take one little pause. Takes the handoff, here comes the pressure. Good job by Fitzgerald not fumbling that ball. Ball security, as you said a moment ago, Kyle. Keep a hold of that ball, don't take any risks, don't lose it. So yeah, you feel the pressure, you get hit, you just gobble that thing up into your midsection and you find the ground as quick as you can. Matthew Schlenhardt. <laughs> We got a lot of cool names <laughs> today. The Hawks have some, some yeah, quite the players. You got Schlenhardt for Maine South, and you got Vrandenberg That's right. for Loyola. There's no John Smiths, no John Doe's today. No, not today. These ones are interesting for you to call. Third and 11. Just don't turn the ball over. Help out your kicker with some yards. That's exactly it. You could be aggressive, just don't be overly aggressive. Look for a shot in the end zone, maybe? I agree with this play call. They did miss a field goal earlier, though. It was a 29-yarder. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, they should go for the kick, but we'll see what happens. 
I hate to use the cliche, but it is applicable here. If you lose today, there is no tomorrow. Can't hold anything back now. No, Do you consider a fake field goal and a pass for a touchdown? If you're the Ramblers, you're up already. Oh, so they're going to just well, they're gonna, they're gonna go for it. There you go. Ah, they got him. That's what it is. So it was fourth and five, so it's a first down. Look at that. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Yeah. If you're the defense, you're kicking yourself now. Coach over there is probably slamming his head in the wall going, oh, guys, the fundamentals. Watch the ball. Beware that snap count. Now you're in business if you're Loyola. Oh, yeah. Now you're thinking, okay, here we go. End zone. Put up another touchdown on the board. Seal the deal on this one. If Loyola gets another first down, Main South coach and Sarah is going to have to call timeout. He's going to have to because that clock becomes your enemy. So it's fourth and inches, or maybe the Jumbotron guy had it wrong. <laughs> Even the Jumbotron guy <laughs> makes mistakes from time to time. Yeah, they got fourth over there on the side. I think they mean inches, not yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, they got the first. There it is. And a touchdown! And Who else? McPherson again, and that might send Loyola to the semifinals. That could be it. Sideline is jumping up and down. Their team is happy. Meanwhile, across the way, the student section of the Hawks, motionless. Surprising. I really thought Maine South was going to win again today. I thought they were going to pull this one out for sure, but as we talked about, we just saw some miscommunications, the inability to connect. It's, it's been a hard day on the offensive side of the ball for Maine South. Every possession is meaningful, and those possessions where Purcell couldn't get the ball downfield, eventually a good program like Loyola is going to make you pay. Capitalize on things for sure. And let's be honest here, it took the Ramblers a while to get things going, but now they got it going. 28-14, the Hawks are in trouble. You're watching the Ramblers against the Hawks here on the NFHS Network. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then click on quality. Click on the highest quality that's available for you. And number three, wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast. If your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon located at the top right of your screen. Number two, click on advanced. And number three, click on the highest quality available. If you're still having issues, type in the live chat. Thanks and enjoy the game. 28-14, McPherson with two rushing touchdowns. These ain't no cheapies, JD. 22-yard touchdown and no. an 81-yarder. These have taken some work. These have taken some effort, but they've been big. They've been critical, and now the Ramblers find themselves ahead by two scores. you got just over six minutes left to go in the fourth. This is it for Maine South. Not only do you got to score, you got to score pretty quickly. Score quick. you got to hold on defense or somehow get that ball back. There's a lot now that Maine South has to do. Excellent return defense by Loyola. On the return was Nico Kakasolius. Long way to go. So now at this point on defense, if you're the Ramblers, hold. Don't give up a big play. If, if they get five or 10 yards here, okay. Don't give up a big play. Do not let them into the end zone because now the Hawks need time. It took a team effort from Loyola today, and they've gotten it for most of the afternoon. Purcell, quick pass. Get it, gets it to Coins. Accepting his job at the wide receiver position well. If you're Loyola, giving up first downs is okay. Try to keep yes. them in bounds. That's exactly it. it. You can give up the five, seven, ten yards. That's okay. Just don't give up the big chunk plays. Make sure that clock keeps running. That is the biggest goal. If Maine South can't score within the next three minutes, they're going to have to do an onside kick. It's going to be a lot harder for them to do much of anything. Purcell with time. He's Purcell, trying. he'll run with it. Purcell, dangerous pass at the sideline and questionable decision making. He had some room to run. He had some room to run. At the same time, there were defenders down there. You know, you don't want to turn the ball over this deep into the field when you need so many scores. So questionable play, but I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to be a playmaker. He's trying to be that guy that he's been this season and make something big happen. But time is literally running out. Yeah, it was only second and one. So you just pick up the first down. Yeah. Clock stops briefly and, and hurry go up. And for a whole new set of downs. But now here you are at third and one critical 
Gonna run with it. I think he'll get it, but it's gonna be close. Well, we talked earlier in the day, the, the officials were very generous with the spot. Hands up for fourth down. And they're gonna call him short. Well, you gotta go for it now. There's yeah. no question. You gotta go for it. So do you just go old school smash mouth football? Do you try to run it up the gut? Do you get cutesy? Do you swing it outside? What is your surefire way to get this first down? So see where the ball is to the chains. Looks like a full yard. Watch for a quarterback keeper. Purcell. Purcell, here comes the pressure. Incomplete. And, and the Ramblers are five minutes away from a semifinal appearance. That is almost the nail in the coffin for Maine South. It's not quite over yet, but boy, that mountain just got a lot bigger to climb. And what a stop by the defense to get a guy in the backfield like that to shut down the quarterback. I think Purcell was looking for a pass, and if he didn't have it, he was going to take off running. But the Ramblers were right there to bring him down, and that shut that whole thing down quick. Nice run by Main South by their sophomore quarterback. Look, everybody picked Naperville North, me included. They went on the road, scored 49 yeah. points on the Huskies, and it was barely enough as the Huskies, led by Jacob Bell, put up 42. Was excellent last week against an undefeated West Aurora team. Doesn't look to be enough today against No, Loyola. and you would think after last week and a couple of previous games that Main South was on this big roll, but now they come in here today and they have struggled. McPherson. Double team down the play, finishing the tackle was Gavin Smith. Love to see that he's back in the game. Good to see him back from that injury, other which is great. Surprised a little bit that Maine South didn't call a timeout. I was just going to say, you got to start wondering if you're now on the defense, do you worry about timeouts? Because clock is not your friend. You've, you've got him in your pocket, or you're just trying to save him for offense, but still, that clock is tick, 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 ticking away. Because every second is yeah. precious. What's more valuable, time or timeouts? Probably time, because clock stops on a first down. Exactly anyways. it, exactly. But you can't win when you run out of time, unless you're uh, Mahomes, who got two plays in <laughs> well, 13 seconds. <laughs> Magic Mahomes, that's a whole different story. Hand off up the middle to Foster. I think I think they went 30 yards in 13 seconds. Uh, yeah, that was a couple of years ago, I believe that was. Back when Tyreek Hill was on the yes, team. Yes, yes. But that goes to show, that's proof positive that there are big plays that can happen and they don't take a lot of time off the clock. So that's part of why we say in football or any sport, there might only be a couple of minutes on the game clock, but that's still a very long time in the in the playing field which is why timeouts are important, ball management, clock management, all this stuff, very important. Every second is precious and could turn the game. Zach Zeman, he missed a field goal, but he made all four of his PATs. See if they have him attempt a field goal, get his confidence back. This time it's Gerald and gets the first quarterback slide. That'll stop the clock briefly. And I think that's pretty much the nail in the coffin for the That's going to pretty much do it at this point. I wouldn't be surprised now with the ball on the 19-yard line. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't shy away from the end zone and try to get another first down to eat more of that clock. You would think that scoring would be the ultimate opportunity, but I think killing that clock now. So look for them to go short yardage here, run more of that clock, pick up another first down, and slowly make their way to the end zone. Yeah, a little bit surprised Maine South didn't call a timeout. Maybe they've just given up. I, you don't want to think that or say that, but you got a question. You've got three of them in your pocket. Why not use one here? Foster to the edge. Even Foster's breaking off tackles to the end zone. Foster was it under control? He picked up anyways. Run. Okay. Where is the signal? I think. They st I don't see a touchdown signal. I think they're going to mark him down at the one. Short at the inch line. Yeah, look at that. So if you have Luke Foster on your fantasy team, you're not too happy. Uh, yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> For those playing high school fantasy football. Right. But now, as we said a moment ago, the clock stops briefly. It'll pick back up. More time. Tick, tick, ticking away. And yeah, they're going to, the Rams are going to take their time here. They're not going to hurry up to that line. They're not in a rush to snap this thing. You got four tries to push it in the end zone. I mean, what if take a knee here, burn out more clock? You could do that, three knees. They call three timeouts and you kick the chip shot to yeah. to beat him yeah. anyways. But I think they want to reward Foster with I a would, touchdown I here. would think so. Foster up the middle. 
Well, Red, you assume Maine South will call a timeout. Now they do. Is it too little, no. too late? Nice of the timeouts to show up finally. Might be too little, too late. Take a timeout as well. It's 28-14 Ramblers here on the NHS Network. Stop what you're doing. If your SBS broadcast looks blurry on your laptop or desktop, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon at the bottom right of your screen. Then click on quality. Click on the highest quality that's available for you. And number three, wait for your laptop to load and enjoy the broadcast. If your broadcast looks blurry on your phone or tablet, do the following steps. Number one, click on the wheel icon located at the top right of your screen. Number two, click on advanced. And number three, click on the highest quality available. If you're still having issues, type in the live chat. Thanks and enjoy the game. People stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Smith alongside JD Dodd. 28 14. What do you want to do if you're Loyola? Uh, at this point, I think you're just going to try to chew more of that clock. Just chew more clock. Use up the clock that's on there. You don't want to put the, the ball into their hand. I mean, if you're down two, potentially three scores. I think clock management now. So, yeah, if you can get the touchdown, great. If you get tackled short, fine. It's it's the clock. Appreciate you making the drive down from Wisconsin. Oh, yes. It's been a pleasure, Kyle. Thank you for letting me sit alongside you today and, and be a part of this. It's been a wonderful opportunity, so thank you. You didn't bring the cheese curds, though. So you... uh, I'm sorry. I left those. A little too cold. And uh, Foster close. Did he get in? They take their time on these touchdown there signals. There you go. There's the signal. Touchdown in favor of the Ramblers. And the Ramblers are officially going to the semifinals. That's going to be it, man. The door is going to be closed at this point. Yeah, there's still two minutes on the clock. But the way the Main South offense has played today, there's, there's really no way you're going to come back on this one. Probably going to go back to coins. You know, a senior tribute. Let him get some time to play in there. Yeah. This happens, man. Took Jordan a long time to win a championship. For Purcell, he's got two more years. And he's, that's just it. I mean, he's a great kid. He's got a great arm. He's got a great career ahead of him for sure. You'd love to see something this year, but there's next year. So we'll stick with the action, 35-14. You wonder if Coach and Sarah had called timeouts earlier. Oh, yeah. Now you start coming back down to the woulda, coulda, shoulda. What if we did this? What if we did that? If this had happened? But that doesn't fix the season. It doesn't change right. anything. It's, they scored it's 14 points. Really, they only scored seven. Yeah, because of what happened with, yeah. the, with the run back. So, Not going to win many games, scored seven or 14 no, points. No, and I, I, as we talked to the uh, pregame show, I'm surprised by this score. I, with what we've seen from Maine South this season, I really thought we'd see a lot more deep balls. I thought we'd see the score ran up. I know both defenses are, are really well coached, are very good defenses, but these are also some explosive offenses. So I thought there'd be a lot more points on the board. This makes you question, what was it that was not clicking on the Hawks' offense today? Because clearly, something just wasn't in place. Yeah, passes were behind. Some blatant pick sixes where they were playing quarterback spy. Yep, yep. And, and then, of course, the bad throw on the sideline. Robinson took it the other way. That ignited this Loyola team. It's true. That was the spark they needed, I think. And as we talked about earlier, too, with the defense, I think the defense might have had this well scouted for Maine South against Maine South, and that's why we have the Ramblers where they are now. So after the kickoff, we'll cut to Wendell Davis Jr. for our last in-game report of the day. As a return past the 15, actually got to the 15. Delomo flag on the play. Wendell Loyola's going to the semifinals and a chance for their third straight state title. Oh, looks like I got a little stuck there. Third straight uh, opportunity to win a state title or go to the semifinals. It'll either, um, it's either Lincoln Way East or Stevenson, whoever won last night. Do you like Loyola's chances to win the state championship again? Um, I love them. I mean, they came out really hard today. You know, they started off slow, lots of flags. But at the end, you know, this was a good old-fashioned slugfest, right? Low-scoring game for most of the game. It was David and Goliath, but this time Goliath came out with the win. Giant came out. You know, they're bigger, stronger faster and that showed in that fourth quarter putting up two touchdowns really or three touchdowns to, to end this game final thoughts about Jamison Purcell he's got two more years of high school eligibility just wasn't his day today um young kid had lots of our talent just keep going and I really think honestly my notes on Maine South 
great team. Um, I really think they just came out too conservative during this game. I really wish I could have seen Michael DeLumo get involved more as a running back because he had a few big runs early in the game. Yeah. But overall, it's like, you know, I think they went back to the three plays that they felt most safe with, and I don't think they took enough shots. Just take more shots. You know, it's the playoffs. Let it lose, right? Yeah. You know, we're trying to win the big game. So I think they came out too conservative, and, it, and at the end, that cost them because, you know, when you're playing a good team like Loyola, who's yep. bigger, stronger, faster, has, you know, more talent on paper, you know, you can't do that. Yeah, you got to put points on the board. Wendell, thanks so much for working with us today, and maybe course, we'll see you in the semifinals. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. That's Wendell Davis as the clock strikes midnight on this excellent Maine South story. They were a low seed, J.D. They were a 20th seed, went on the road to Naperville North. Then they got the home game because of the IHSA seeding rules. Um, it's a tough place to win at, at Horster Field. It is, it's a very hard field here. This is a great facility. This is a, a Ramblers team that is well coached, that has been on a roll as of late. And I think the defense found a way to get things done today for sure. And just the main South offense struggled. And that's that's the key to the story today. They struggled. That game is good enough for a main South first down, first down, 10 yards to go to the Hawks from around 20. I'm a little bit surprised that Coins wasn't that quarterback. But, yeah, you know, maybe he likes playing wide receiver. Uh, maybe he does, or maybe he said, hey, you know what? This is how it goes. This is how it goes. Bad pass. Will he take it in or will he or will he slide? Thinking six. Yeah. He takes it in for six. Pick six for Jack Davis. And there are some fans on the main south side that not, aren't happy about They're that. They're not happy, no. I mean, score running up short. But listen, when you're a defender, you want to have that. That's just something you want to have, a feather in your cap. When you can get a pick six, that's something you can brag about. And sometimes some of these coaches reward the defenders when they can get something like that. So I get it. But at the same time, yeah, you're up already. Slide down. Call it good. Apologize. It was Barrett Schiffer Decker. What are some of these names, man? That's, that's some interesting names. This, uh, this ain't no rookie league ball. Uh, no, this is not. But these are names that have been called today that you're going to call again most likely next week as uh, Loyola looks to move on. And and I think their game's going to step up even more. I think next week they're going to pick up a lot of things they've learned from this because this is a very good Maine South team that they held to just 14 points today. So a flag on the play, I think, because the ball's on the 21. Let's see if they change it on the jumbo try. They did. So no touchdown. Okay. No. So I appreciate Wendell Davis working today, so no touchdown. But I don't think he gave himself up, so I think it was a block in the back. So that could have what it was that stopped him. So points come off the board. But it wasn't because he gave himself but up. But no, no, no. <laughs> so there were some fans from Maine South not happy about that. No. And this is nice. They bring in the backup and Gabe Brooks to take a knee. And a big thank you to Maine South for coming out. And great season for them, for Loyola even if they have to play undefeated Lincoln Way East, you better be ready to play if you're the Griffins. I think so, yeah, because we've seen today, uh, we, we talked about how well this Hawks team has played the past couple of weeks, came in here, they had their game faces on, coming off the game bus, and now to only get 14 points, to get beat 35-14, this is tough if you're the Hawks. Yeah, not only did you lose, you got beat down a little bit. A, a little bit toward the end of the game. I mean, things weren't clicking for you. You kind of got humbled. You had a little bit of humble pie today. On the flip side of that now, if you're the Ramblers, what a confidence boost. I mean, you struggled. Let's be honest. You struck The first play of the game, there was an injury. Second, third play of the game, there was penalties. You did not have a good first half, but you found a way in the second half to get things done both on offense and defense. To be Lincoln Way East, though, assuming I haven't checked the scores for last night. I think they won. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you got to be good from the opening snap against Lincoln Way East. I think it's going to be a phenomenal game next week. It's going to be one that the fans are going to enjoy, and it's going to be a heartbreaker next week for whichever team doesn't move on because, wow, what a season for both squads. I believe Lincoln Way East would be the home team for that game. Okay. Um, but big thank you to Loyola. They're advancing to the semifinals. Main South, the road ends here. This is tough for the Hawks, for the, for the players, for the fans, because what a season it's been, what a role you've been on. You put in that sophomore quarterback, you saw what he could do, it was flashy, it was great. And now this is how you cap things off. It's, it's a heartbreak, it's a depressing one, but it's a season to learn from, for sure. What's better, talent or experience? Sometimes experience beats talent. I, I would say so, experience will sometimes win out over talent because experience knows. Yeah. So, crew for JD Dunn.
For Brandon Januska, for Hayden Bales, and for Wendell Davis Jr., I'm Kyle Smith signing off. 35-14 score. Loyola's going to the semifinals. Maine South, their road ends here. We'll see you next time on the NHS Network.